Hello everybody, welcome to CPL 7 Match of the Week. I am finally back, I am Neblim. I'm not sure what I've missed, but I'm sure Saint Zero will fill me in. Saint Zero is here, obviously, he's just hanging on my every word like he always does, right Saint Zero? Absolutely, but I'm not, like, it's not my job to keep you up to date. You've been missing in action, you've been taking care of the not StarCraft stuff. The least you could do is study up and catch up to us, like all the people learning at CPL so well this season. Well, look at look at it this way. If I had time for one of like two things, I'd be playing StarCraft, keeping up with StarCraft. I'd be playing it. Oh, okay, no, three things: casting. Casting would come first, and I didn't even have time for that. So, I hardly had time to catch up as well. Well, then we're just gonna play it by ear, man. You're gonna be surprised because this season's been great so far, and just because you're not keeping track of it, that just means you're in for a surprise tonight. So, how is our sound balance, by the way, guys? Because obviously I haven't streamed in a while. Just uh, let me know in chat if it's no good. But yes, today we have. Flying SCVs versus Fear Factory. We're going to do some tier 3 games, going to showcase some of those players who maybe aren't quite so developed, but that just gives so many more options, I feel like. So let's jump into that first game. You know, I'm not used to the new maps, and I believe it was Ascension is the map, first map this week, right? Absolutely. Mm, that'll be interesting for me too, because I've hardly had a chance to, chance to even play on them. Alright, starting in the 12 o'clock here. In the teal, we have Dead Infested. And in the bottom left, in the grey, we have Nightcat. TVT starting us off here on Ascension. Yeah. This was also top for Spawn, because these people are nice. Oh. They make sure they treat the casters right, especially since Nightcast has been doing a good amount of casting this season. More than the blime, so, you know, we're going to kick them <laughs> out. You know? <laughs> You're just going to throw that out there? Oh. Okay. I mean... Like, we're already in the cache, you can't kick me out now. People saying their blind's a little low, that's no problem, I'll turn myself up. That's what I wanted to know. Alright. Did you just throw yourself in the third person? <laughs> I said, are people saying, is their blind too low? You know, that's, that's what they're saying. So, Fair just enough. to recap, Dead Infest is actually going to be in the blue nightcap and the red. Because, uh, yes, as you said, you do have top of his bottom, and you know what, that grey colour, I'm not a fan. So, I'm, I'm going to switch it over. Oh, is he doing... 8 Depot? Is there a player behind this, or what's going on, I wonder? Well, you're the Terran player, this is TVT, you know, like, I, I know Pros, which Pros, I can pretend I know a little Zerg or Zerg TVT, it's a wonderland of, I have, it's like Narnia, man, I've never been there, <laughs> and I have no idea what's going on. Okay, so, I mean, theoretically you could be going for like a really fast gas and barracks here, a really fast factory here, but I don't see a purpose, I'm just going to assume it's a mistake, but I guess we'll see if I'm proven otherwise. This is tier 3, so the opening build orders aren't always super solid. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Okay, going for an earlier Rax here. We see it's only going to be like a few seconds ahead of um, Nightcats. I guess now coming out here. So one thing about this map, right, because you have no ramp, uh, and in fact the natural is fairly wide open too, this map is what you can call Vulture Hell in TVT, where you just have to make enough Vultures to not die. You have to make more than your opponent, basically. Some maps you don't really have to. You can, you can kind of go straight to tanks and play a game that way, but this map is definitely a, a pro Vulture map, so you're going to be running around lots of them. If you don't, you may suffer. We'll see, we'll see what both players go for here. I know a very popular opening for tier 3s is uh, 2 fact Vulture, or 3 fact Vulture even on one base. But we'll see what they do. Well, I would also say like Vulture is probably some good on this map because... Like, we're, the Vulture unit themselves, sure, but there's so many paths, there's so much ground area you can maneuver around. I think Mine's value goes way up on this map, especially Absolutely. with some of these really small chokes that you see like by the natural and... So I think just be able to like close off some of these paths so you can just really focus on the high ground areas in the middle of the map, probably the way you want to go. Yeah, I wonder if Vultures didn't have mines, you definitely still make them early on in TVT, but maybe you just make like two or three and then forget them. I don't know. If Vultures didn't have mines, I'd play more StarCraft. <laughs> <Just>. <laughs> right. All right. So. Hey, no, I've actually been trying to play. I've been trying to play StarCraft. I've been actually like working it up a little Ooh. bit. Okay, say zero for Coach Win. Okay, so... Oh, oh no, I'm back in e rack man. Yeah, oh. I slid. No worse. <laughs> Alright, so playing more of us. This is if we can sneak up in here, that Marine not blocking it. He hasn't seen anything too out of the ordinary. And we do see as if he's pulled off gas here, so no cat's showing every indication he's going to expand. And in at the same time, in Dead Infested's base, that SCV did actually get repelled by these two Marines. So it does not see anything, and we still have gas money here, but we don't see a second factory yet. Could Dead Infested be going for a double starport here, or is he just going to throw down that factory soon? Certainly looks like Nightcat's going to be expanding and Dead Infested is not. I feel like if you're going for a lot of factories, I don't know if I like that so much here. I feel like 
Well, actually, no, Nightcat didn't really get a lot of Marines. I thought, like, with, you know what, the ramp, you figure a bunker would be a little bit more of a priority, just because it's not like you could turtle up on a ramp be real defensive early on, so... I don't know, we'll see how this plays out. Okay, we do see a command center after all. Uh, in fact, it's pretty similarly timed to Nightcat, so there you go. Uh, we do see Dead Infested down a bit in his CVs though, unfortunately, already. So I feel like Nightcap already pulling ahead economically. We'll see what Dead Infested has up his sleeve to deal with this, because his system reduction is just falling behind right now. Um, okay, does right out that second factory a lot in advance of his opponent, though. So he can potentially get the Vulture count, do some counter harass. Uh, I mean, we'll see. The thing about having no ramp, right, is most of the time you don't need to defend with Marines. Um, it, it's only in very specific circumstances that you're actually defending your ramp, like for example if your opponent just made more vultures than you and you need to abandon your natural for a bit. Look at this, Nightcap preemptively positioning his marine to intercept the barracks, I like that, get more damage on it faster. Because one marine's going to take a hell of a long time to kill that. Yeah, seems reasonable. And Dead Fest has got the tanks on the way and working on siege mode, so no vultures, no map control, no nothing. Just going to start building up back at home, which if they start working on like an early armory, maybe going for the upgrade advantage later on, I would love to, to play like that. But right now, Nightcats, whenever they want to move out with these vultures, they're going to full control basically anything they want. Yeah, it's a bit unfortunate Nightcat didn't send them immediately, because if your opponent goes tank first, you can kill those marines easily and then deny the command center, and that's a very strong move. Because um, the tank won't be out by the time the vultures get to this base. Nonetheless, tank is out now, so dead infested looking secure. Um, still not many SCVs, unfortunately. Now now we're arriving at the production, now this natural is done, so maybe you can catch up a bit. Now we see Nightcat 5 SCVs ahead in this game, he's going to have a lot more money, he's going to be a pump out a lot more units. This barracks coming in here, sees an early armory, and that's actually a very key scout, because that uh, says that your opponent is not going starport. Because if you're going your own starport, you wouldn't bother with this safety armory to worry about getting Goliath. So I think that's quite a nice scout. He doesn't want to come over and see the factory count, though, I think. We'll, we'll see. He's, he's going back. That, that pre-position marine that I was praising before is actually sleeping on the job. Didn't actually do anything. <laughs> I don't, I'm already worried, though. Like, we're not... Nothing's really happened in this game other than people building up, but Dead Infest is already down seven workers. And with Nightcat, like, yes. getting the expansion slightly faster and committing to armor, it's like, my play later is going to be better because of the economy, because of the upgrades, because of everything. And Dead Infest is one, like, fast each tank. It's like they're going to turtle up, but they're not in the position where that's favorable. Well, it is advantageous if you go tanks first, if your opponent isn't able to get a lot of mines around. Again, these speed vultures moving out now. Now, I don't think a run bow would be a good idea, because most of them are going to die before they get past these siege tanks. And maybe you do some damage, but like on balance, I would say that's not a good plan. We'll see if he tries that. No, he just wants some map control. Here's the thing. Dead Infested is going to have the tank count, because he started producing tanks first. But with superior economy, Nightcap might be able to do that. And vultures are just superior up to a certain point, because like you said, you can just maintain map control. Okay, just take a shot there. Um, but as soon as he has mines, he can, you know, control all this space, and Dead Infested won't be able to move out too fast. I don't know, look, aside the SCVs, which in the margin is now, what, how much is that? Eight. Eight. <laughs> aside from that, I don't mind Dead Infested's position at all, but really he's just, uh, been hurting himself by not producing SCVs. That's the only mistake, really. Um, and Nightcat really not mackering that well. We see 800 minerals, I mean, part of it is just having more money at the same time, because uh, you see his supply is way ahead anyway. Keep in mind, though, Vultures, a lot less supply efficient and a lot less strong for their supply. But nonetheless, uh, Nightcat not spending his money that well, either. Yeah, Nightcat well, having the machine shop, but that factory's idle. It wasn't making tank till just now, and only working on the second refinery. Like, if this was a move to get a fast third CC, can I control the six o'clock? Well, you see Dead Fasted. You got these tanks, you're all turtled up. I don't think you're moving now. There's a little action up at the front, but the Vulture's just kind of taking free damage. Managed to get a couple mines down, but... Not really going to be doing much of anything. Yeah, we see Dead Infested sitting in an extremely defensive posture here, and I mean, this is a kind of a mistake a lot of new TBT players are going to make. You really have to take any scrap of uh, land on the map you can on this map, because you have this really narrow choke. You can leave like one or two tanks here, and then just start creeping your way up and take this third. The key position is this high ground. If your opponent occupies your high ground with tanks, you are screwed. <laughs> like, you're just going to lose. Um, so that's the position I feel like Dead Infested really needs to get to. Now he's using turrets to push here. It's not the best option, but it's decent. But I love that Nightcat's going for preferred command center here because he knows he has the mine contain and Dead Infested is being very timid about pushing through it. That's that's a good situation to go for a command center early. I would say normally you want more factories, but in this case, because he has mines up, I think uh, I think this is a good move. But we see Dead Infested is going to actually make his way over to this third fairly soon. So honestly, not looking too bad still for Dead Infested. It's just still this economy matter. 
Still, well, I mean, it, sorry, you with the only thing hap with the only thing happening, the economy matter is the only thing that we That's can like, really focus on. And you can see Nightcat is taking advantage. While Dead Infested will be able to slowly push out if they want to, like these mines are going to be able to see most drops. I would, I would like them to be a little spread out more. But Nightcat, instead of trying to control and slow down any pushes, instead making sure there's no drops, there's no race play, no nothing that's going to get in their way and kind of slow down how they want to play. Because back at home. They're not really setting up a big defense. They're getting a CC and kind of being a little bit greedy, but it's not like they're going to get punished for it. Yeah, I, I think um, the prophecy is going to be fulfilled here. There's tanks running this high ground senior on the way. If if Nightcat can set up a strong siege position here, it's pretty much it's pretty much in a winning position. I do I do like that he put these mines for drops, though. Like you say, it could be better spread out, but it is a nice move to do that. And look at that, that third base already up. Dead Infestus has not started. Who scanned? It was dead infested. That's the only. That's okay. the only one with the ability because the academy's yeah. about to finish for Nightcap. So if if he uh, knows the matchup well, he will know that his opponent must have a third CC down already if he's only starting his fourth and factory now. Uh, I'm not sure if he'll be able to interpret that. We'll see. But these tanks still sitting stationary. Okay, he's going to try and move up now. He does need to come forward and take this high ground before more tanks are reinforced. But oh no, a tank getting baited in. Okay, he does pull back. Very nice. Yeah, you need to be aggressive in this scenario because you cannot let your opponent maintain this position. More tanks coming out. He has the units he needs. He just needs to get them all together and push up here. Ooh, baiting those vultures in. That is very nice. Get some good hits. I like that Nightcat started adding a couple Goliaths to make sure that eBay can't move too much more forward. They're finally starting to reinforce the tanks and really control this high ground pod. Yeah, now this is a bit too many. I mean, both players have a floating building here, so another player is going to have a building advantage. I would say at this point, this is when you have to pull the SCVs and just go all out to try and bust this position. Because again, if you don't bust this position, you pretty much cannot win. Because it's easy to stop units coming out the narrow choke at the natural, and it's very easy to stop units going past this left choke. And honestly, playing with dropships from three bases only is usually not a winning proposition, unless you catch your opponent off guard with a big doom drop. Oh, that SCV. I I Sorry. Well, you're saying it'd be hard to push through the, that uh, choke right now, but if Denfest moved their barracks to the left, there's nothing actually blocking that choke. That could be a way to get out right now, at least. There is a mine, though, so uh, I feel like Nightcat would know something's happening and immediately be able to block it. That's the thing. Even if you know the units there, the mine just lets you know that something's going to try and come through there. But yeah, we see, we see Denfest is still the same defensive line now. This is good. If he takes out this barrack, he could potentially abuse the vision advantage to get up here. We see Nightcat researching uh, plus one armor, which you know I'm not really a fan of. You really want to go straight for plus two attack in this matchup, because plus one armor does nothing to tank those tank battles. But there's no science facility, unfortunately, so mm. that is going to be a bit delayed. Do you, like, do you have enough time just to finish the plus one before you'd even be able to start not the plus two? You, or not, not well, not with the time he has his starport now, and not if you get the starport at a normal time either. I, I guess my answer to that question is basically you should be getting the starport the science facility so that you don't. <laughs> Still putting more time. No command center coming up here. I mean, that's still, I think that's fair, but remember, this is tier three, and this is a matchup that you're not gonna practice a lot on the ladder. A lot of people like dodging out of this one, or playing like a really aggressive, cheesy, we're ending this in 10 minutes one way or the other kind of game. So I feel like the fact that we got very conservative openers from both players, we're actually setting up into a mid game. This can really start slicing up the map and see who has the better positioning. This is not something that I would say tier three players really should have good practice on. Yeah, fair enough. I'm impressed with Nightcat though, that first he placed all these mines, to look for drops, and now he's actually checking for his secret bases too, because he knows he's in a really good contained position. I would love for him to start a fourth base though, I feel like I see any pieces missing right now. Is this if he count as decent, but he has a lot of minerals too. Vultures are never a bad unit if you don't have gas, they're pretty strong. And when you're in this stronger contained position, spamming turrets in every available path is not a bad idea either, because a lot of the time, the contained player will just make like 10 dropships and try some massive drop. Okay, we do see the third CC is going to come up here. I mean, so we see a lot of money from Nightcat. Is this the kind of thing where you could just throw down another CC, literally Definitely. just for a refinery? Like, oh, they don't even care if you ever take the minerals. You can take I mean, it later. Think, just about get it the like, refinery. think about it like TVP. If you have like eight bases or whatever, you want to spread your probes, right? You have like two probes in your main at the end of the day. You do that in TVT as well. If you're able to secure enough bases, here we go. Brilliant. Night catching the fourth. Nightcat looking so strong right now, honestly. Just has a much better handle on what he's meant to do in this matchup, I think. Where he's not he's not trying to push in here, he's just going, okay, I have this position where my opponent like can't break it. I'm just gonna keep expanding on the map, check my opponent doesn't have any, even setting up drop defense with these SCVs in position. So Nightcat looking like he, he really understands this matchup. Whereas I feel like Dead Infested, you know, he, he doesn't really have a solid plan here. His SCV production has been very poor, and now I'm not sure how he's gonna get out of this contain. Oh, we got some lag. Did you miss me guys? The lag. <laughs> yeah, back from Australia. It's okay. Now, something that, like, as the observer, you're not checking around for, but I'm always keeping tabs on it. If you just flash the vision of the two players real quick, Nightcat sees everything. 
absolutely everything. And Dead Infested literally got his bases and nothing else. So I can it can be as greedy as they want to be right now. They can be getting whatever tech. And I see a lot of scans going down. Just to keep an eye on what Dead Infest is building up to if they're going to start making a lot of star ports or anything like this. And Hold up. People really, like the stream is dying. Um, anyone in chat? Can you hear it, me? Can you tell me the streams? Yeah, it? it's yeah, it is uh, kind of choppy. At uh, okay, the moment, it looks but... better now. I think it's back. Sorry guys, I just had a lag spike. I'm not really sure what happened there. Okay, well, if people in the chat let us know if it's still that, we can pause and try to fix it. If let us know if we're all fixed, it looks better now. At yeah, least I think I think it was just a lag spike for no particular reason. Um, I don't well, know the reason you're in Australia. Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Uh, the, the, I don't know if people heard what I was saying, but I was basically saying I think Nightcats are doing a great job just expanding while he's containing, putting turrets to stop drops as well. Um, and I don't know if the NFS really has much way out of this. Okay, he's making a few more SCBs now, but still his count is extremely low. Literally, Nightcat would double the works almost. Still, though, he's not hey, well, here, here's, he, here's a move that will pay off eventually, but I, at this, uh, by the time it does, I think it might be out of control. Physics lab on the way, going battle cruisers to kind of yeah. break this line. That could be a move, but it's so I slow. thought I thought he would do this, but the, on three bases, I don't think this is the play. Um, and like, I feel kind of bad about this because I feel like this is gonna give Dead Infested the wrong idea of the matchup. Like, oh, I only lost because I didn't go battle cruisers soon enough, or like, you know, I didn't micro my battle cruisers, which is not what's happening here, right? He's losing because a he didn't make SCVs and b he didn't uh, try and take the position on the map, like this key position in particular. And like, the battle cruisers are just like a symptom of that, like. I don't know. I, I, I'm upset about this. <laughs> we'll see if you can well, make it I mean, work. I, I do at least like that. It's an attempt to do something. Because yeah. if you're just going to try to go ground army and try to fight straight up, then unless it never breaks out, he ends up slowly dying. This is at least a move to maybe shake something up, but Nightcat's already in a good position. As, I like this though. This I, like, I would say there's not, enough, there's not enough anti-air by the army. That would be the only thing I'm looking at, but like, realistically, Nightcat's... What do you mean? He has like 11 high. Goliaths. Well, I mean, if you, like, I guess you can't build in that high ground pod, like no turrets? No, you can't. No, you cannot. Oh, that'd be broken. Yeah, it'd I be great if you put like 20 <laughs> turrets there. Dude, imagine TBP. You just like come up here. You, you do do two fact, but you don't even go in the natural. You just start building up here. Wait, just wait for Protoss to what? leave. What okay, are you talking about? I love, I love to TPS map. There's no ramp, ramp to defend your main. That's <laughs> true. That's true. So, uh, Nightcat still just putting more and more turrets here. I think still anticipating drops. I don't know if he scans uh, the main yet. I guess we'll see if he does. Um, no battle cruisers coming up just yet. Oh, because it's supply blocked. It's gonna be some time before those are operational. Looks like Nightcat continued to expand though. Doing a great job there. Only two on gas at this fourth. Okay, there we go. Fixes that up. Very nice. So yeah, Nightcat Night continues to just like mine the whole map while well, then the city on three bases. So just ranking up, racking up that money. All right, so let's let's uh, let's talk theory, Mister TVT God. You love this matchup. You're very good at it. Well, well hold on, hold on. Nightcat's gonna try and come in here. Theory's over, it's time for practice, but I don't know about this, there's so many tanks each up here. I think Dead Infest is going to smash this attack with the upgrades. Both players on 1-1. One, one. I don't know, I, th I think this is a big mistake from Nightcat. Oh my gosh. Well, he killed some tanks on the left. Is he hitting that CC? Ooh. Okay, Dead Infest needs to push back to reclaim this CC, but I think he should be able to. Because, uh, he just killed so much stuff. Even these vessels falling, they cost so much gas, but the CC is getting lower and lower. And he's still getting hit by these four tanks. He needs to overlift that or push back and retake this location immediately. His economy is so poor, he really can't afford to be losing that CC. Yeah, everything about that attack screamed, I'm Max and don't know to do attack. And that's usually a terrible idea, especially in a matchup like this. Definitely. Where there's one really strong point of contention. It's like, don't attack into this spot in particular, Nightcat. Tries to go for it anyway, trades so inefficiently. Still has a little bit of supply lead, but that was like 60 or 70 just a minute ago. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think Dead Infested is going to make the attempt just because he hasn't by now, and he's thinking, yeah, yeah, I'll just make my battle cruisers. Um, but that really gave him an opportunity to counterattack and bust up here. Um, the thing is, Nightcat is rebuilding a lot faster because he's a lot more money, but I mean, if he keeps attacking like that, he, he's, he's going to die. Like, all his units will just be gone, and then even battle cruisers will come out too and just have nothing on the ground. But I, th I think maybe he's learned his lesson after that. These tanks are still in range of the CC, by the way. He just needs vision. Like, check this out. <laughs> oh, it's so close. Um... But yeah, definitely not a, not a good idea to attack in like that. You literally, in this position, you just wait for your opponents to leave. They're making battle cruisers, that's fine. You just make your own wraiths or battle cruisers or whatever, and just wherever their battle cruisers go, fight them. But you you can't attack into that many tanks. You wait until either your opponent tries to attack and lose all the tanks, then you counterattack, or you just wait. Because yeah, we saw what happened. He they like the supplies equalized when Nightcap was almost 100 ahead. 
And look at this, he's making his own star ports. I like this a lot more. Still needs more gas though. Um, but he's starting to make his own star ports and he is making rafes. I think that's the right move here because the battle cruisers, wherever they go, you can just intercept, kill them with cloak maybe. And the thing is, even if he like hides over his turrets or whatever, you just have so much more money, you should be able to trade with the rafes eventually. Yeah, and it could even just be an opportunity. Like, because Dead Infested, he's been investing in this trying to hold his front turrets in the useful spots. Like, you get race, especially with low cloak, maybe you're actually going for a little bit harassed, trying to kill some workers off or units out of the production. Yeah, people in the chat pointing out this expansion only has 2,500 gas as well. So, Dead Infested really going to be struggling to get enough money to make all these double cruises. And look at that, he realizes he's in range of the CC. He's like, wait a minute, let me just uh, keep shooting that. Now, Dead Infested definitely has enough here to retake this. In fact, it kind of almost looks like he can bust if these tanks don't move up and siege up. Or he could definitely reclaim another inch of ground, at least. Still not a player with plus two? Okay, there we go. Okay, both players have hit plus two, so attacking actually becomes a lot harder. But yeah, he can't keep repairing this CC as precious little minerals as it is. And this is going to be a constant drain on his resources. I mean, he's like, well, precious little minerals. He's got a decent amount of money banked up, but yeah, the gas is kind of the issue here. That uh, he needs to make well, sure he can keep this thing alive. And, and you can see that he's not going to be taking any more bases for a long time. That is not much minerals. It's going to run out very quickly. And, like, he's not That's mining fine. that much either. When you're trying to make Battle Cruisers 3 at a time, 2001, much minerals. Oh my god, the CC. Okay, he does repair it again. He really just needs to push forward. It wouldn't be too hard to dislodge these two tanks. Okay, the Battle Cruiser's coming out. I think Dead Infested just does not want to attack with tanks ever. He's just waiting for the Battle Cruisers. And look at that, scans them immediately. So now Nightcat knows. Does he have EMP available? They do not have an EMP Yamato yet at any rate, but if he EMPs it, it'll take a little longer. Oh, he just starts researching it. He's like, mm, that'd be nice. No Goliath range, are you kidding me? Oh my gosh, nothing sad than Goliath's for that range. Is it maybe Goon's for that range? I mean, still though, oh, the Wraiths <laughs> too come in and they're just gonna deny this completely, actually. That's a lot of Wraiths. Okay, Goliath's coming up Dead Infested, but the tanks will do massive damage to those. In fact, Dead Infested trying for a big all-out push. I mean, I, I guess I guess that's not the wrong move per se, but I think it's too late. There's just so much up here. Nightcat has like an entire Terran army up here, just smashing through these small number of tanks. And this might be the end actually, because I think Nightcat can easily push down and take out this third GG. Yeah, we thought that attack when Nightcat went down was bad, going up against a superior army in a better position with a high ground advantage. <laughs> like yes. that's. That fight was never going to work out. And, th and that's why you need to reclaim, or claim that high ground pod as soon as you can at the start of the game, right? There was definitely a window where he could have moved up with his own four tanks before any tanks were there, but uh, unfortunately he did not claim that. And as we saw, the Battle Cruisers didn't really achieve anything. Yeah, and I mean, the way we saw that first game pan out, Night Cat knowing where to control, getting set up in a good spot and then expanding behind it, I feel like we could definitely see that on their second map of the night, Players Rhapsody as well. Yeah, alright. Same tile set, right? Same tiles, it's like the same map, right? <laughs> no. Will the game be exactly the same? We shall see. Alright, in the top left here, in the red, we have Nightcat Victorious in the first game. And in the bottom right, in the blue, we have Dead Infested. Can he bring it back on Polaris Rhapsody? Can he potentially get more space in the map here? Julian Chef says Nightcat. Let's see what these players can do. So you were about to ask me a theoretical TBT question on Ascension. I can't let that go. I gotta I gotta milk that for all it's worth. What are you gonna ask me? Well, it wasn't... A, a, I mean, the game was on Ascension, but it wasn't particularly an Ascension thing. Because we were looking at the game, it was like, Nightcat was nearing max. They had four bases, but they weren't, like, taking more. It's like, at what philosophy, like, do you trade units for, like, I give rid of my vultures to get more Goliaths at some point, or are you just mass expanding to get as much gas as possible? Like, because I feel like in some of the other matchup, mirror matchups especially, but in stuff like PVT, for example, if you expand too hard, you get punished for it. But yes. at some point, it's like when you're just maxing, getting nothing done, that's not really that great either. Right. Well, I would say in TVT, you always get five facts for your third base, unless you have something like a mind contain, which we saw that game. Um, and then once you have the third base, you just kind of like keep taking CCs as you can afford it, um, as long as you have the space on the map. You know, so so theoretically, if all else is equal, both players have seeds line in the middle of the map, and both of you have access to half the bases. So you just keep taking them like every couple minutes. Well, so like in that last game, like Nightcat had a bank of like four thousand. Oh minerals, yeah, he definitely should have been more bases. They, they, they just should have had like three more, just like even if it's just refinery. Definitely. Okay. Um, like I said, you do distribute your SCVs, right? You do want to put like you know two SCVs in the main, and like you know three in the natural and just spread the rest around and stuff like that. But you do definitely do that as well. But yes, most of the gas is what you want it for. 
Um, okay, so Dead Infested we see again with a very weird opening build order, getting this 10 barracks, 10 gas. Um, I think he's just not solid on the opening build orders, and we see that's kind of punished him last game with his uh, low SCB count as well. Well, I mean, the opener wasn't the, the problem with the low SCB count. It did, it's like, true. It, it if they help. were maintaining it. Yeah, it didn't help, but it, what, it, one SCB like that didn't turn into like a 5 lead into a 10 lead on its own. There's also him getting a CC and two factories and a machine shop and like he was like getting a lot of things like maybe well, a little you can too afford quick. those things you're supposed to get SCVs at the same time that's all um but hey he but he cut SCVs out. to get them faster he cut oh, SCVs I to see. get them faster oh they, they intersect they lock arms and then they go on their merry way oh, I feel like this might be a little bit bold for Deadfest had just lost a very conventional game straight up, and Nightcat is getting no Marines. Does not care about cheese, not even a thought in their mind. <laughs> well, it's going to work out, I think, because uh, it's only, only the first Marine coming out now. It's not like he's going to be coming across with an 8-Rex or anything. Factory's starting way earlier for Nightcat, um, but there's a lot of gas for Deadfest. I wonder if he's planning to do something crazy here. Still Factory not starting, getting very late for Deadfest, unfortunately. This is going to be a big problem. Focus on marking this Marine. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure where his focus is right now. Maybe the SCV. Maybe the SCV is going to get taken out. Okay, there goes the factory, but it's like, I think, two thirds done almost for Nightcat. So if he sends his first Vulture across, honestly, it could be game ending damage. We'll see. Second Marine is coming out, though, and two Marines and a ramp of an SCV probably hold a Vulture. I don't want to make any promises, but they probably could. I oh, remember it's also, it's just also like Eclipse. Even though it's a two player map, we know where your opponent is, but the ground distance is actually significantly long. True. True. Well, I mean, we saw last game Nightcap was not inclined to send his first Vultures across the map anyway. Um, it's understandable, because if your opponent goes Vultures as well... Ooh! Well, speaking of your opponent going Vultures as well, we have a 2-fact here, and I can only assume it's going to be a 2-fact Vulture um, coming up from Dead Infested. And I was saying, it's a very, very popular TBT build in lower tiers, and like you said, uh, Dead Infested lost a pretty conventional game last time, so maybe he's thinking, alright, switch gears, do this instead. And you know, opening uh, Vulture, not a shop, is actually not preferred against this. The best thing against this is getting a machine shop and attack right away. So Knight can't even get two Vultures before shop. I don't think he has any idea, because the SCV got taken out. It looks like a third factory going to come up here, or maybe that SCV is just idle, I'm not sure. So it's probably going to be three fact Vulture based on that. Oh, oh he's thinking about it, just uh -huh. needs the money. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm like, oh, I'm... <laughs> there it goes. Yeah, finally there. I feel like... I mean, with the first factory getting delayed, and like you see, like this little like waiting, it's like SCVs are getting cut. The distance is long, and Nightcat's already gonna have a decent amount of units back at home. I feel like this, it's unlikely to do big damage. I'm gonna like being optimistic. I'm gonna say it's unlikely. I think that Infested has to find some kind of opening where they can sneak their way through. But Nightcat's about to finish their CC. They're working on machine shop stuff, so if they can get tanked kind of at whatever point, that'd be enough alone, I think, to stop this. But why would he? If he's doing what he did last game, he's just going straight into Vultures, which is a fine move if your opponent is expanding. And he has no idea that his opponent's on one base here. So I think it's quite likely Nightcat just pumps Vultures with speed, and then Dead Infested just shows up with more Vultures with speed and kills him. Yeah, I would say I think Dead Infested might be a little bit thrown off from that first game, because like, they didn't even lift the barracks to go scout. Like, there's definitely things that look a little bit yeah. off the the factory timing, not scouting with the racks. And I like, I, I wonder if they are trying to hide something here. It's like trying to catch like an element of surprise that it get like a, at least an advantage position. But C3 Vulture's moving out here. The fourth one's going to be lagging behind. But like, the speed's about to finish, but that means it's not mines. And Nightcat's moving out. They have more Vultures. The Vulture's <laughs> actually spreading out for Dead Infest as well. Oh no. He's going to lose one right away. Not even on attack move. Okay, this is just a wild stop. So yeah, instantly deleted by the 5 speed Vultures. Nightcat. Nightcat going to rally up these reinforcements too. Oh no. Unfortunately, Dead Infest is not really getting all his forces together and rallying. And yeah, this is going to be denied almost immediately. Uh, and Nightcat with three factories of his own up right now is probably going to be able to just counter and win the game if he, if he so chooses. If you win a Vulture yeah. fight like that, you should immediately attack. Because if your opponent went tank, you can just run away. And if your opponent did go tank, you can go win the game. Um, so he's going to do it. Okay, but uh, Dead Infest does still have the ramp here, right? Because he doesn't have a CC to defend on the low ground. So he can at least hold that. And I, I think he has enough Vultures here, especially with the Marines. The Marines actually have excellent DPS. They're just very squishy to Vultures. Um, but he needs to physically block the ramp if the Vultures are able to run past. Okay, maybe maybe this should be fine. In fact, now with the superior Vulture count, you need to be careful coming down that ramp, though. This is becoming like a PvP. The Vultures are like blocking the ramp. Yeah, honestly, I don't want Nightcat to attack here. Like, you have a good advantage, but you see both players have their arm. 
They have their equal vulture count. There's a weapon upgrade on the way from Nightcat. They got the expansion up. 10 worker lead already. Like, you don't have to do anything crazy and risk a potential counterattack. Just chill out. You're feeling pretty good as Fire Minds are on the way. It looks like uh, Dead and Fist are going to double down here and go for the starport. Not sure if he's going to go for drops or a Wraith. I honestly prefer drops than a Wraith here because the thing is, armor is already up. A Wraith takes a long time to actually do any damage, or if you drop four vultures, you can do a lot of damage before your opponent really notices sometimes. Um, but we'll see what he goes for. Either way, it's going to take a long time. Yeah, Nightcat already with his second CC is looking pretty strong. Needs several factories, I think, though. Like, getting a starport of his own instead. Honestly, if Nightcat starts making Wraiths, uh, Dead and Fist is pretty doomed, I think. But we'll see. I mean, that's the move I would like to see. Like, drops make sense from Dead Infest's position because the mains in this uh, place are pretty big, especially b behind the minerals and the natural. Like, if you're not really keeping good eyes and everything, you could definitely put yourself in a bad spot. Seeing a lot of mines go down, which, I mean, the vultures don't trigger, but if the marines ever move out, that he could be a little bit of an issue. He needs to lay mines in the natural. That's what you have to do here to A, stop the CC, and B, stop tanks coming down here. Because the thing is, if Dead Infested was switching into tanks this whole time instead of making vultures on starboard, he could just come down here and see no problem and take his expansion, and you kind of, not exactly wasted these mines, but you could have stopped that. But now this barracks in here is going to see everything, and this feels terrible when you're like, yes, I'm drop, and the barracks just floats in, like, oh, drops, is it? Uh, so, I don't know. Is he going to get Cloak and a Wraith instead? Okay, he's getting a dropship. These two marines trying desperately to stop it. Do we see a wraith coming up? Because if your wraith can just shoot down that dropship very well. Not yet. Yeah, I mean, so sort of stay in the barracks and get all the info they need here. Dead invested, not even attempting to take another expansion or anything. And like when you know the drops are coming, like how is this gonna do damage? But I mean, Nike back at home, it's not like they're they're starting to make a lies. Never mind. Like there's just there, nothing's gonna happen here. <laughs> this is just unfortunate. Yeah. Oh, these vultures are going to try and come up here. We saw Nightcat get a bit antsy in the other game. Oh, he wants to lay mines, but he doesn't have that many left. See, these are the mines you need. But coming up here, I think, is a huge mistake, because there's plenty of vultures dead infested, but he did catch them all move commanding into the dropship. Nonetheless, I think this is a complete slaughter for Nightcat. Oh my gosh, dead infested actually up in supply again somehow, despite having like 10 less SCVs. 13 less SCVs even. So now, dead infested could hit with like a, a an attack at the front and a drop in the main. These glives are out and they're very effective against vultures, but he, they can't be everywhere at once. Or at least he could try and expand now. I don't think those mines actually blocked the CC, sadly. Yeah, and Nightcat's back row, despite all this, is actually falling off pretty hard here. They got plenty of money in, like, supply space. They didn't keep grinding out a whole bunch of Goli uh, Goliaths or anything, so... Like, they're actually still down in supply. They got a massive worker lead. They still haven't taken the second refinery at the natural, and they're just trying to build up infrastructure back at home. But they had that scouting info so far. There's nothing back here to defend it as vultures can get dropped in the main. There's Goliaths aren't far away, but yeah, there's still the natural. And this is the thing: they already huge gems going down. That dropship needs to try and make its escape. Oh, but they get baited into Goliaths. But yeah, already a good number of SCVs falling. The only thing is, still Dead Infested doesn't have a second command center though, so it's kind of a moot point. Oh, and those vultures actually get baited over. You want to just run into the depths of the base and get as many free shots as you can. That dropship not evacuating. The Goliaths seem to not care about taking it out. Oh, here it comes. Oh, the second drop. The second drop. Now the Goliaths are in the main. I love it. That's a beautiful move. You're going to kill a lot more SCVs with this as well, I think, especially since Snowcat's distracted by killing that other dropship. Ah, uh, but there's one vulture to bait that maybe he's target fire that. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, this is still... This drop is doing big damage, but Nightcat's worker count is still significantly ahead. But well, he could have killed every SCV here locked. if he focused by, but instead got shot, got attacked by that vulture. And this dropship is still not returning. When you do this, you need to fly the dropship away. You're not going to pick up those vultures and rescue them. You need to just leave immediately as soon as you unload. But look at this, the run by. Oh, but the vultures do block it. Nice move there. Yeah, and they will, they will never decimate those vultures. You never research mines either, so yes. can't uh, lay down mines to help deal with these glides or tanks, so. These vultures thought they could find an opportunity to get some damage done. The natural for Nightcat had stopped mining, everything got evacuated or killed, and Nightcat's still up five workers. They still have the CC where Dead Invested still hasn't started theirs or cleared you out the natural or anything. Four factories and a starboard of one base, I'll tell you that. Um, yeah, if, if Dead Invested started CC behind this, I feel like he might have had some chance to come back now, but still, it's like, well, you killed a lot of SCVs, but your opponent A has a massive army that you can't match, and B still has more economy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. He sees it. Will he get it? Oh, it? Does not kill it. I don't know if he actually saw it, if the Goliaths just saw it. Oh, I've seen the Goliaths try to chase it down, but unfortunately, yeah. slower than a dropship does turn around here. And the, the other dropship that barely survived managed to get out. It's trying to snake its way back home, and we're seeing that dropship go back towards the main. And there's no Goliaths or anti air position. Oh, they were doing here a minute ago, but they're, oh, they're patrolling, they're patrolling. And look, more coming out. And once again, these vultures are getting distracted, not, not moving and targeting SCVs. 
Uh, and the, the dropship, once again, just sitting here waiting to be murdered, needs to run away. Okay, one Vulture runs for the SCVs, but I don't think it's going to get me. No. So, very ineffective drop there, unfortunately. And I mean, Nightcat looks like he's about to set up down here with Siege Mode. I don't know if he has Siege Mode researched. But that, those Vultures cannot fight this army alone. The tanks need to back them up. Orbe's getting baited into the into the tank range. I mean, if Denfester takes out these two tanks, he can potentially come down here, the Siege Mode goes down. The Vulture's just getting absolutely annihilated. Like, we're just seeing Nightcat being in a better position here. Even with that flub of an attack up the ramp, like they're still massively ahead in supply now. These drops haven't done enough for Dead Infested. He just keeps adding factories. Like he has no intention of taking another base, but like these drops, like you've already revealed the card you're going for. Yes. It hasn't been enough. Like adding more factories isn't gonna make it work anymore. He's lost the element of surprise. Yeah, and I think Dead Infest is gonna have to face the reality that his main's gonna mine out. Like you can't you can't just play on one base forever. Uh, look at this, uh, Nightcat took the opportunity to start this barracks and the tanks are moving up, even takes out one of his own. Ooh, and targeting Goliath, you really need to target the tank there, because the Goliath can't shoot back at that range, obviously. Ooh, high ground though, ooh, and now he's going to take out that tank. So now there's no tanks here, actually. One more comes up to reinforce, but it's mostly Goliath. Goliaths were very good against vultures, but very helpless against tanks when they were already sieged. Okay, well here we go, Denifest is going to come down this ramp, the mine barely doesn't go off. Okay, now we can take this position, but there's a lot of Goliaths here. I, oh, he's getting in too far. Now the Goliaths are just going to destroy him, actually. He needed to siege back. But now, look at this. The Goliaths just come on top. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, just trying to move down, but it's like... He, let's say you secure that lower ground. There's no CC. He could have started CC in high ground floating it down. It's not like he gained a window into his natural to do anything effective, and now all the units uh, at his ramp are dead. These Goliaths can move up here. Yeah, he's that on the scouting production ability now. finally killed off. Yeah, like, how do you get out of this? These I don't raids think are going to do absolutely anymore. nothing with, like, mostly Goliaths being made. And look at that. It, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> he never even existed. Rapes do not last long. I mean, it got made. It hit the field. You could say, I tried to play raids and it wasn't enough. And Deathfest is going to tap it. out of this one, and unfortunately, didn't hang up, uh, hang in there for too long, but Nightcat takes a pretty convincing 2-0 uh, win and a pretty hard matchup to play. Yeah, I think Nightcat just had a, a, a way better understanding of the matchup, to be honest. Um, whereas, you know, I think the first game, Dead Infested kind of had a vague idea, like, I'm just going to make tanks and expand, but then the second game, it's like that fullback thing a lot of people do, where they're like, alright, screw TBT, I'm just cheating, but that's the thing you can't really in TBT, it doesn't really work. It's not a matchup that cheese is effective in. No, I think if you were going to cheese in TBT, you eco cheese, you CC first. Sure, I'm, I'm fine with that. But the problem is then you're still facing <laughs> the problem of like you don't know how to play the positional game though. And the same sort of thing That's is probably going to happen, to be honest. You yeah, CC I mean, first and then go into like three port rafe or something. That's yeah, I think that it. would still just be. It's a hard matchup, and I feel like because no one wants to play on a ladder, especially like if you actually get into a game, you don't want to play like a 30 minute ladder game for like 12 points or whatever. Like, <laughs> it's just, that's it's how just I feel rough. about TVP sometimes. Ah, uh, come on. Killing Zealots is fun. And speaking of Zealots, we're going to get to that second game, and you're going to see lots of Zealots. Maybe it's prosperous for us. All right. In the 12 o'clock position, oh no, I'm still on top of the bottom. In the 12 o'clock position, in the peach, we have Shimmer. And in the bottom right, in the navy, we have Champion. So it's the Day of Mirror matchups. PvP coming up on Ascension. Now this is a matchup where no ramp is very impactful. And in fact, this map is kind of hell. Now I think about it for PvP. My god. Oh, oh no, it's it's bad. It's real bad. I played some practice on this for PvP to try to get a feel for it. And that, that narrow choke by the natural is like impossible to work through and it can mess up your pathing which you know makes things super fun and interesting but because out if you're going to go the smart way to attack from the ground that high ground pod near the natural near the third is a great spot to set up dragoons and yes. weavers just the most obnoxious stuff yes can you just put like two goons on the narrow choke and the rest of your army on the high ground? Does that work? Or can they still get through the narrow choke? I imagine if you try and move like a late game or a mid game army through the narrow choke, if your opponent just comes over and steps while you're halfway, it's never going to work out because, you know, it can take too long to get everything through there. But yeah, it's the same thing as like, like Overwatch back in the day, trying to move across that narrow bridge. Yes. Even if there's nothing in your way, your army's not getting through that cleanly, especially yeah. not your goons. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's true. 
But yeah. you're also funneled together for Reaver splash damage or any kind of like storm. Any, like, and once you get to that point in the game where you have two bases and you're moving things forward, it can get really confusing. But getting there might be just be hard because there's no ramp, like you said, on this map. It makes it a little hard to defend against early aggression. Well, you know the curse of CPLT3 Protoss versus Protoss is you never get to storm. They might get a Templar Archive, they may, might even make a High Templar, but you will not see a size storm. We'll, we'll see if they can break the curse. Unfortunately, Shimmer not parking the probe correctly, it's kind of stuck down here in its corner, still doesn't know where to go. He's, he's looking yeah. over that cliff like, oh, if only I could see into the enemy base. If only I was playing a shield battery. <laughs> yeah. Alright, here it comes. Oh, nope. He's yeah, so unfor uh, unfortunately not really sure where they're going here and that's one of the things with these kind of maps that aren't on the ladder that haven't been cpl before not in a while if anything that it is you have to figure out what you're doing here so missing these scouting opportunities can be really bad here but both players kind of blindly their openings not looking too bad here but you can see a uh, champion going for a zealot before the uh, cyber core is on the way and shimmer finally starting theirs but they're floating money a little bit as well well, we didn't see Champion send any scout, which is concerning. Zealot is out, but it's just chilling. Okay, here it goes. Um, now the scout gets in for Shima. Oh, don't lose that. Don't lose that. All right, keeps it alive. I mean, there's not too much to see at this point in the game. I guess you see your opponent didn't go 10-12. Is he going to leave? No, don't leave. <laughs> oh, so he barely finds anything and just goes home anyway after that quest to get into this base. I mean, even this is a little bit useful info, knowing that it was Cybercore, not the double gate opening, the big zealot pressure. Yeah. Knowing a little bit what you're expecting is not bad here, but you could definitely stay in there long enough, see if they're researching Dragoon range, see if they're adding on extra gateways, or you could stay alive long enough to see the Robo. All that kind of stuff would be very useful in this matchup. Mm. Well, okay, the zealot for the champion going the wrong way, which is uh, kind of a consequence of not scouting at all. I think it's... Uh pretty pretty ballsy not to scout in pvp right because like i said that 10 12 exists proxy gates not necessarily unpopular like i don't know and now this zealot is like just wasting its time in fact made two zealots went straight into two gates here but not able to put any pressure on if this zealot was here right now i don't know i mean it is an enemy zealot so probably wouldn't be able to do anything but still yeah i don't like not scouting here because like you're saying like there's gateway openings but there's also Nexus first. It's like DT expands. There's all these kind of like, it doesn't have to be aggressive. It could be an economic build. And if you're just hoping you guess right, you're literally just hoping and guessing. Which, I mean, if your plan is like, I'm tier three, I'm getting used to the matchup, and I'm just planning to go two game robo regardless, I could see a little bit of maybe you don't scout. But even then, like, it's not an effective practice because you're having more money than you should. Okay, we see Citadel coming up, by the way, for Champion, so not exactly planning for to get Robo here. Um, we see a Robo coming up for Shimmer, though. It looks like he's intending to expand here, maybe off 1k even. Uh, and look at this, he's setting the probe out already. I mean, this is a bit ballsy. I would say you probably want to wait a bit longer, but nonetheless, he's going to put this Nexus down. He's going to walk the reroute. Actually, whoop. Everything I say is wrong. He's actually he's actually just scouting. Don't listen to Nebline. That's the first rule of casting. Well, he doesn't find um. much. Now uh, we've uh, we, we've still kept the tradition of saying something being immediately wrong. That's that's not died out in your absence, so don't don't even worry a little bit here. Mm. Champions got a probe at their natural, but I thought they were gonna look at the nexus. I'm like, you got some little money, like it's not gonna be a nexus. So both players kind of played a little bit interestingly, but Shimmer here because of how they're kind of building up, they're getting out of the gateways now. It's gonna it's looking like it's gonna be three gate observer, which will no be good against. Archive, the... By the way, so the Citadel right now not doing anything for Champion. Um, so I don't know if Shimmer gets a reaper out pretty fast, he's going to have the advantage, but okay, right now he's just defending this choke, and here's the thing with no ramp, I mean, Champion microing really well, just trying to get in there, do a damage candy, almost took out that Zealot, but the thing is, with Defender's advantage, you got to be careful here, because your opponent's goon is going to come out, but reinforcements coming across, I don't know, this almost looks like Champion is actually going to bust in here. If they, if they're bold enough to go for it, I think you could here, they do kill the Zealot, so now they got two Zealot lead with reinforcements, Almost on the way, they stop in the middle of the map. I don't know what happened to the rallies there, unfortunate. Shooting the eggs, not super important here. I don't oh, think you no. need to really worry about that. These so reinforcements much. could have been here by now. If they were, this would be very different, but now it's kind of the opposite. He's actually just kind of trade badly here. What happened to those goons? Why'd they stop? I have no idea if they're in like a hockey where you hit a thing, but still champion going in forward here. Wow. With the two zealots, the defender advantage is still not that whole much. Remember, because Shimmer delayed those extra gateways a pretty long time. We got two more goons on the way, but the focus fire is already enough? pretty good. I don't know, two goons still... gonna pop out, but 
GG. I mean, I guess it is enough because reinforcers are on the way too, and he wasn't actually building from that third gate. So damn, champion doesn't even need reinforcers. He's just gonna micro his way to victory. Smooth. That is a game that both players really need to review because there's a lot both sides could have improved on. Not having the rallies, both sides not macroing during the fight during any of the micro. And both of the builds really hitting some massive hiccups when it's like an attack's happening, not getting your next piece of tech, not getting the observers, not building their dragoons with the gamers. There's just a whole lot of things that on both sides that could have been executed cleaner, but Champion does push through and get that first one. Yeah, he did, he did have good, uh, like, micro in aggression with the green ground. He was trying to pick at the position and realizing there's no ramp, he can abuse that. So he did a good job, but definitely, like you say, his macro issues. And those reinforcements, man, I'm going to be lying awake tonight thinking about that. I mean, imagine that wasn't, like, a bad rally. That's just goons being dumb. Yeah. I, I don't think it was, but what if it was? All right, in the top left, in the purple now, we have Shimmer. And in the bottom right, we have Champion coming in here for game two of this best of three PvP. Currently Champion up one. Keeping that blue, I mean it's a different blue, but it's a type of blue, so I think he'll be victorious again. What what animals pick blue versus purple on Twilight Twilight <laughs> tile set? At least it Jesus wasn't like guys. light blue versus navy. At least it wasn't like light blue versus navy, that's the ultimate terrible thing. I'm sad nah, they just, removed I'm the gonna, I'm just gonna call it, colors. Why'd they remove cyan? Don't, don't you like not being able to tell between minerals and your opponent? No. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. Okay, well, the sea Polaris is a bit different, right? Because we do have a ramp here, so we may see things go a bit more. Uh, Shimmer's pylon is early. And I don't yeah. know. Like That's not something in this matchup that I think means anything. It's I also think as far as error, possible from matter. his ramp, so... I don't think he's going to be going like a 9 gate in base or something like that, right? It doesn't really make sense. Yeah, no, I don't think particularly it's going to, but this is this is really not what you want to be seeing this early on. Because like we saw it with TVT, but this is going to be a lot more pronounced here. Little hiccups early on in this matchup, that could be the difference between you have your observer on time or you don't. Absolutely. Or like a round of Dragoons for defense or your Dragoons all get killed off. Like it's yeah. so important to not mess up the early game Definitely. in this matchup. I mean, that's just Starcraft in general, right? It applies to all matchups, what you're saying, but yes, absolutely. Um, so, was that was that a 10 gate? I think it was. Yeah, I think it was, yes. Okay, so yeah. From, uh, from Champion? From champion, it's a 10. Shimmer. No, Shimmer started in on 9. Oh, okay. Well, okay. On on, on one hand, it does make sense to get the pawn earlier, then, if you're going to get 9 gate. Well, actually, you know what? You still get 8 time, you might know. I guess it was just a mistake, but look at this. Going for that 10 12, Champion mixing it up. Got the openings. You know, last game, I don't know what Champion was doing, getting that Nexus, but had not actually got the Templar Archives, so if he hadn't kind of won the game right there, he probably would have lost. Um, so, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of dubious about Champion's build, but maybe this will be a bit more straightforward to execute, and Shimmer so far, we're not sure what he's going to do. Well, I like Champion's decision here, because remember, like, he didn't have the reinforcements. The two Zealots right. really kind of won him that them. fight. So, so, yeah, so, like, you're on a two-player map, it's like... You weren't that great about dealing with Zealots. You know what? Double down on Zealots. Let's go for it. Fair now, I, I am curious, is this going to be the old school style that is a, a lot of Zealots and you go to an expansion behind it? Or is it going to be something we've seen a lot more modern where you add on a gate a little bit later and you just put on big Zealot pressure, see what damage you can get done, especially tier three where you probably don't have the best like probe drills to help deal with this. You, maybe your worker micro is not going to help you out through these fights. Champion, if they attack with these first three Zealots, this could be really big. Yeah, well, we'll see if Champion wants to come across the map and be aggressive. Definitely did last game. Still didn't scout himself, though. For all he knows, his opponent went 10 12 2, or his opponent went Nexus first. Who knows? It's very, very disturbing that he's playing completely blind here. Well, I don't mind it nearly as much now if he's planning to attack with these Zels. They'll scout when they get there, <laughs> if he wants to go for it. So he's got three, and we see more on the way. Unfortunately, a little bit of a hiccup here. You could be getting all five, and Champion's still waiting instead of attacking. I don't like this as much. I want to see pressure being put on, but he is getting the gas behind it. This does give you a bunch of units early. You can be aggressive if you want to. And Shimmer's got to know what's coming and know how to deal with it. With the second gateway on the way, I think they at least got an idea. Yeah, so... Getting two zealots of your own, is that actually better or worse here? Because like on the one hand you have zealots to defend early, but on the other hand it's like, well, you delay goon production, the only way to fight this is to use your own goon to kite, right? Uh, well, it's depending on how good your micro is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like, the big thing I'm actually a little surprised about, that if you really were stressed about the pressure this is about to bring to you, 
I would like a shield battery. I think it's a very foolproof way. It's very easy to manage to kind of work your way through. But we do see that first goon here. The two zealots is enough to block the ramp. I think that so getting to that point is actually pretty useful. The champion's just building up zealots back at home. They start to mine their gas. The cyber core is done. And we'll see if they're just committed to some big attack. But if these just show up out of nowhere and you're not ready for them, this could cause a lot of problems. Well, like I say, if he attacks with 6 SCVs, if, right? I mean, 6, six SCVs, 6 zealots. They're almost as strong as SCVs. They can try, but... Yeah, but he can't be going for a citadel behind this as well. So maybe the plan is just to keep his opponent scared by the fact that zealots exist and then suddenly show up with a DT. Or is he going to go straight for legs here? I would like to see legs because it's interesting, but I don't like the decision because I think by the time you get legs and you got a lot of zealots masked up, Shimmer could probably have a reaver on defense. Yeah. If they like, were like planning to get the robotics, get the expansion, kind of just sit back and play very defensive. Yeah, and if you, if you have a reaver, like, the Zealots are pretty helpless. They get just destroyed by Reavers. Okay, he's getting legs here. Here's the thing. If, if Shimmy gets too aggressive, comes out, and gets caught on the map, he will get slaughtered. But if he just maintains his defense, I think he's going to be fine. It's a support bay. Yep. But this Ooh. will, at the very least, um, make sure that you have map control. This, could, this attack, even if you can't bust through, you don't feel comfortable attacking. If you see no Nexus, you take your own, you have playing units, and then... Maybe add on more gateways, go straight into a lot of Dragoons, play a big ground force that isn't relying on Shuttle Reaver, that kind of stuff. You know, Forge in the West, Champion at least respecting that he doesn't know what's going on. He's going to have a cannon up in time for detection, although if this is a really dedicated DT rush, he would be too late. Yeah, uh, I mean, but the thing is, he's blocking the ramp, right? That'll buy him the seconds he needed. He'll be, he'll be fine, I think, if it was a really dedicated DT rush. In any case, um... It looks like uh, Champion going to try and expand behind this anyway, so it might not be, be a problem. I mean, look at this defense right now. I'm like, okay, if you come with how many, like, 10 speed zealots, you're not going to break through with so many numbers that, like, the Reaver popping out won't just finish them off. So I think Shimmer is safe, but the problem is he's already produced less SCVs, I mean, probes, damn it, and uh, Champion already starting this Nexus. So, like, I don't know if I like Champion's strategy per se, but Shimmer kind of not, not uh, gaining much of an advantage in this game either. Just playing super safe with this Observer coming out. Yeah, I feel exactly the same way. Champion's no build was very middle of the road, but speed's about to finish. The Nexus is being started, and he's uh, moving out on the map here. And this Observer is going to maybe, is it maybe? Gets, oh, it does see a bunch of Zelds moving across the map. What is Shimmer's reaction to this? He has a lot of Dragoons up the ramp, yeah, so you can just hold fine. strong. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah, he's pulling a probe. I don't know if he's going to hold position in, in place with that. Oh, no, he's, he might want to build a shield battery, but there's no time for that. But I think he should be okay. Okay, he does build a shield battery. But yeah, this should be fine. Oh, but you need to hold position those zealots. You cannot get pulled out of position here. That was almost disastrous, because if those zealots suddenly get us around and finish off those, those enemy zealots real quick, then they can do stuff. But yeah, look at this Nexus almost finished here. So I guess once Reavers are out, though, Shimmer's army will be far superior. We could potentially counterattack. Do you think that's an option here? Well, Reaver's going to be out, but no shuttle. So you're still pretty far away here. And I think like if Champion realize there's no nexus i can't attack a breakthrough i would love to see them just go right for the temple archives work on storm and since it's on the way you're the one that said if you do not see storm in this matchup this is our best chance yeah he's gonna make like eight dts instead i don't know dt drops always strong <laughs> like if your opponent has no cannons only observers dt drop is very good because their observers will be put out of position um but okay look at this but there's no, there's, no there's no robo there's no robo yeah there is it's below the temple. Yeah, it's, just, it's just below the templar oh i can't click click it damn Nice. Oh, you get rid of the other yeah, thing. Anyway, uh, so the Reaver's out, and I think Shimmer's, Shimmer's army is actually stronger here. So actually, I don't think there's time for Storm, even if, you know, we were expecting him to get Storm right away, which I'm absolutely not. Um, I think Shimmer could still come across and actually destroy this expansion. But well, the shuttle didn't get started, so I take it back. If he, if he had built a shuttle, there's a lot of ifs here. Definitely a mistake not to just build the shuttle before the support pay is even done as well. And it's not going to be Storm, we do see DTs on the wow. way. Wow, what a surprise. Of course it's DTs. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up with your DTs. Finally a shuttle comes out. Yeah, Shimmer is going to be working on making this army mobile. Has plenty of Dragoons back at home and with the Nexus on the way, but they've been done a lot of workers a, lot, a good period of time here. The Reaver is going to have to be very integral. And since Champion Ooh. is all zealots all day, there's no anti-air. He's, He's doing it. Very He's, doing easy. it. To... He's getting Storm. No Templars yet. I, I would like... I would be very impressed if a storm actually gets cast. We'll see. The DT is going to come out here. The observer's in position, though, so that's not going to achieve anything. The zealots still precariously hanging out here. They're going to be careful in case they suddenly get damaged by reaver shots or something. 
Yeah, these two DTs not going to achieve anything under these specs. Well, I don't think you see these elves. I think they're in a great position for a ridiculous counter attack. I mean, no, yeah, he doesn't see them. But I'm just saying, if, he, if the army does catch them, and like, while well, you're not looking, a reaver shot goes off, and then a bunch of goon shots, you're taking a lot of damage on them for free before they can run away. Okay, next is finally oh, here, finished. Here, co here comes the shuttle with the reaver. Going for harassment instead of a dedicated attack, keeping everything back at home. And with the two DTs here, here comes all the Zealots. The Dragoon's up in the front, Zealots not here to help, and no Reaver as well. So the Observer's going to see the DTs, but still it's a lot of DPS. But Champion doesn't feel very confident, going to back off. Does get a little bit of damage done. And I, was, I actually think you could have muscled through. I wanted to see him keep yeah. attacking there. I don't know if he would have won the fight, but it definitely would have been a good trade, I think, um, without the Reaver's there. Ooh. Nonetheless, here comes Third the Reaver. Cannon's goes. already in position, though, and in the main, too. So I don't see this doing too much. Oh, he's going to fly right into it. Oh. Oh gosh, you can't be doing that. Okay, he does turn back though, he doesn't lose the Reaver, but third base coming up, and there's Mirror Lonely up here already. Mm. Yeah, that's in a weird spot. That doesn't get explored for a while, but I still don't well, like that. I still think the three, you can block off the entrance to the three. That's the way you want to take. If you're going to take an expansion like this. Well, this is almost on the way. further from your rally point, right? I'm thinking if your army is positioned like kind of here in front of your bridge. I guess you can't see what I'm saying on this stream, can see it. If your army is positioned kind of <laughs> here, it's going to be easy to defend. Uh, defend that third as well whereas the uh, three o'clock is so far away i feel i don't know maybe i don't know like the the three o'clock you're up like two buildings and a couple cans away you don't even need units to defend that i don't know about that reavers exist huh. yeah reavers exist but like by the time they get okay yeah, you'll lose their okay whatever it's still i think it could have been fine here but champion is staying in a probe up to the top right maybe gonna take that double gas base in the corner yeah, well, this probe going to try and take the uh, other mineral one, but uh, oh no, he's, he's he's going to the top right as well, but not going to happen today. Okay, here comes Shimmer, and like honestly, if he gets his army together, like he can crush any one position because Champion's army is completely split. Is DT going to try and get in? No observer with this army right now, but a lot of damage goes down to the zealots. They do retreat here. Shimmer's yep. work account is still far, far below Champion, so that's that's definitely a big problem, especially if he's looking at the face. I mean, look at this natural. There's hardly any probes there at all. Um, so Champion just macroing way better now. You can see it shows in supply. He's 30 ahead. Yeah, but remember, it is 30 of a really weird comp that's entirely zealot. So there's nothing to really uh, help with this anti shell control right to help now. with these reavers. But we're getting an attack here. Shepard's well, going to try to fight die. these zealots. What is yeah. the reaver doing? Where's the shuttle? What? The zealots running the against the natural. The natural. What is happening? <laughs> these goons are actually losing as well. The reaver is just like. Uh, Okay, who even left, though? Well, uh, I'm gonna say Shimmer. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm that gonna makes say sense. Shimmer. Do you have the result available? Because, guys, please, yes. please yeah, yes, like. yes, I do. It was Shimmer. <laughs> okay. But, wow, that was an abrupt end. I don't even know what happened there. Like, suddenly the Reaver was in the wrong place. Well, the army wasn't taking that fight on the right side that well, and then the counterattack is all it's in the natural. It's about to decimate the workers that are already kind of light to begin with. So, that I definitely see that game ending. But yeah, GGs. You know, you don't need to just explode, Shimmer. I see you in chat, man. So <laughs> you uh, GG in private chat later. That's okay. Okay, so I would say I would say 30 deeds. By the way, T3 is like below 1500 approximately. It's not based on MMR alone, but I would just say as a general idea. And this is what all we're casting today is T3. Uh, it's it's lower than fifteen hundred for sure because oh, fifteen hundred really? would be like a good, it would be good tier two. Oh okay, well what do you reckon like lower than thirteen hundred? I think like thirteen fifty is around okay, the, the okay. borderline. Fair enough. I mean what I said was technically still correct, but yes, okay. Yeah. yeah, this is a learning league where people are just you know working with coaches trying to improve their game. So we cast this kind of stuff too because it, it helps to point out some of the issues that people are having and you know just get excited about people playing the game in general. Okay, in the 12 o'clock, in the teal, we have I Got Your SCV, and in the bottom left, in the magenta, we have Jakester. Please tell me I Got Your SCVs for Team Flying SCVs. Yes. Thank God. There's although some justice be, in the world. Although, to be fair, I believe they race switched their SCVs. I thought I remember them being a Protoss or player early on. I think they switched the turn. Hmm. That does disturb me. But but if his name is I Got Your SCV, I guess he didn't get his own SCV. He got your SCV, so he could be any race. Well, that would explain the pros. Mind control, man. Oh, you that's think, why he's here right now. You gotta think, yeah. you gotta think tier three, man. Of course. Hey, but we got not the beer. We got the PVT. And on this yeah. map, with uh, hard to move, hard to know what expansion patterns you want to take, I think uh, 
this could be a very interesting matchup, especially depending on who wants to be aggressive first. Ooh, depot below the units will flow. I'm not liking this Sim City, but we'll see what happens. Um, so yeah, my immediate impression for TVP is it seems good for carriers. It's not particularly good for Protoss, because uh, Terrian can split the map quite easily, and taking additional bases is not too hard in general, but if you get carriers and you use a good like micro angle, like there's a lot of clips and stuff you can use, I think it can be devastating. We'll see. And the thing is, it's actually quite hard to do a, a two base push, I feel, because you have this massive high ground above Protoss' potential third. So, so I think carriers are a pretty solid option. Arbiter, I'm very dubious on, because I feel like Terran has an easy time splitting the map up. Uh, see, I Ooh, I mostly agree with that, but I like that. Double yeah, scout, no gas. Is... Okay, there's gas. Where's the barracks? What is going on? Oh the, tier three players is going on. Remember, this is a yeah. place where people are learning. Sometimes it's the macro that needs some help. Sometimes the build. You gotta work through your coach a little bit. So this is definitely a little bit unconventional. There's really no reason to go gas before barracks, right? Not really. Uh, you can go like just before, like you should get your barracks like before any more SCBs or anything, but yeah, not really. I think maybe he just forgot. Oh, I don't think he's going to realize until he has 100 gas. This is very unfortunate. Okay, no, I think he's going to go build it now. There we go. Alright, so on the way, no big deal. It's, or is you know, well, oh, oh, there it is. Where is it? Where the hell is it? At the bottom. He's going crazy. Of course. <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> right. Okay, well, hey, you know what? Uh, this, this wall is actually perfect if you're going to put another depot there. I assumed he was going to build a barracks, but since he's not putting enough depot, that's actually totally tight. So he's not planning to actually build his factory in here. He's going to build it down here. Is he going to proxy two factories or just one? This is friggin' wild right now. The probe gets here and he's probably just like, what the... Why is he building a second barracks there? What is going on? Is that just a fake? What? Well I, I think it's the fake, but Jake should click that and be like, your barracks is barely starred by I have a it should be production. You're doing it should you be are finished. doing sh yeah, you are doing shenanigans. <laughs> I hope he cancels it though, because it makes no sense to have it here. Unless he wants to build like one marine in a bunker, but then it's like, well, why'd you build this other one, right? Okay, he's just building lots of barracks. That's what we're doing. Okay, okay. Is 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 this the Liquipedia legend deep six? <laughs> no, you're supposed to extend normally with that. So He's still mining gas though, what's the gas for? Because he doesn't have an academy started. I would say you get two racks in and then an academy if you're going to do that. Like, you don't get three and then an academy So I don't know what to think. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a lot, I'm lost on like all fronts here. There's one Dracoon that's like inches away from seeing this barracks and be like, Dude, what are you doing? Oh but my he's going to he move moves across the map. Just as the oh, no. comes down, are you kidding me? Oh my god. Oh, this, this is tragic. This is tragic. Okay, so Jake's over here trying to do a normal 23 next. Just like, you know, tying his shoelaces, looking both ways before he crosses the street. Little does he know, like, in the bushes, Jakester is here, like, with his shirt off. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> See, the problem is, Bunker doesn't protect these depots. Even if you got marine range, the goon can still hit those depots. Yeah, I, I am just a little bit worried though. Jakester, if he starts poking at these uh, depots and stuff with this Dragoon, he should know immediately that something weird's going on here. But getting a row behind it, looking like they're doing very normal. The one gate expand, three gate observers, like back it up, and then looking for a third one eventually. Well, I guess he's just building up a marine count and it's going to show up out of nowhere. <laughs> I think Jakester, if they got. NCX in chat saying it's not deep six, it's shallow three. That's amazing. <laughs> Okay. That's fun. It's a, it sounds half as good, <laughs> so we'll see. So, so the thing is, Green Range is done. Oh no, he's moving out. Wait, what? What's he gonna do with that bunker? I what? What is he doing? What's he gonna build here? Like, if he had a factory, he's been like siege tanks. I could kind of get it, but now I'm like, well, you're defending these barracks. Good job. Then what? Like, oh my gosh, this is blowing my mind right now. I was going to say, since these goons move across the map, but you could run in like, snipe the nexuses or all the probes or something, but now it's like, well, you're just fortifying your proxy. Jake's to very politely not hitting these depots still. Yeah, I think we, um... I think we're seeing the birth of, like, the next Terran Barisu, just monster kind of player. Showing up with all the Marines, finally, pretending it's StarCraft 2. Moving forward, D Dragoon does die almost immediately from Jake's turn. There's no units here. <laughs> so this yeah. Nexus is definitely going to die. You're going to lose the expansion, but honestly, you move it to the base. How do you survive this attack? I think it's going to do game-ending damage. Well, he can at his own base, though. The Goons are finally knocking down that wall. And, like, two Goons with range technically can kill this if you micro well, but it is tricky. And that one Marine is like, no, I'm getting right in there, and he's dead. 
but at the same time, Jake's still knocking down the wall on his opponent's face. The factory finally going up. A lot of Marines coming in here, and it's hard to micro this. Support Bay coming up, which is actually perfect, because Reavers would decimate this. But, I mean, the Goons are falling. He's not microing them completely. Trying to run past this bunker, but actually taking a lot of damage. These Goons will fall if they try and fight that bunker head, head on. It looks like they are going to do that. So many Marines now, and the Zealot rallying out is going to get taken out on this immediately. Okay, this bunker might actually fall, though, but I think the three Marines will actually still win the fight. Oh, maybe. It's going to be very close. Anyway, in any case, one injured Dragoon is not going to finish off. Yeah, I got your SUV, and he's, he's working on these pylons. Only Zealots coming out, but that's not going to help you. <coughs> zealots are like one of the worst units in this scenario. Has he done it? Is, is, is I got your SUV going to win with the Shallow 3? Honestly, if SUV just start killing the pylons, they depowered everything. That's yeah. all you would really need all here. All do is but the Robo, right? The Reaver, the Reaver is on the way. There is an opportunity if he moves up there when it pops out before it has the first scarab, you can go kill it, but... You see, now starting to do the probe damage, still working on the Nexus up with the Natural, so big damage here. A little, could have been much more effective if it was focused a little bit better here. We're seeing another pylon go down, lack of focus fires, that Reaver's about to spawn. What's the reaction going to be from Terran? Is that Reaver? Well, maybe none. Oh, he's building his Scarabs, the murder can Yeah! Do. Okay, so Protoss will technically survive. That Nexus isn't even dead, so like, he is very down on probes, but I don't think necessarily behind in this game. If you get a shuttle out, Terran is going to have a hell of a time defending. I don't think he even could possibly defend if a shuttle gets out. That SCV doing its goddamn best, but not quite going to take out that Reaver. Get him! Yeah. Go. No. <laughs> but Marines can right. come in here. Actually, you know what? Does Is his economy ahead enough that he can trade Marines for Scarabs? Probably not. I don't think he's that ahead. Still, though, it's a, it's a drain on Protoss resources. Oh, he does get that Nexus nicely done. Honestly, if you trade uh -oh. one, like one, like, as long as it's not splash and kill multiple things, like. You can, oh, you can see, trying to yeah. go through the Vulture staying alive, that Reaver's health is getting, low, getting so low. He's not it's got so many kills. Only one Scarab left, he's not rebuilding <laughs> them. Uh-oh, now he has no shots left, he's actually going to get taken out. And that's all he had. And, Jake, and Jake's just supply blocked here, too. Well, you don't need to so find out that Reaver, he doesn't... Yeah. Oh. oh, no. Wow. Oh, he doesn't micro that Vulture, though, so Zealot's going to save the day. The game goes on. Whatever confusing state it's in, the game goes on, but three factories up right now. I got your SCV came into this game, he's like, Command centers, that's not what I need. Get, get that out of here. I need I need other buildings. That bar that bunker's still existing, I'm not sure what benefit it really gives, but yeah, these Marines continue to rally in. I mean, Zealots won't stop if he doesn't even have a reason he's building. He did ribble a few probes as well. Oh my god. What does this Marine think he's gonna accomplish? Okay, now there's two minutes uh, different, but still. He's, he's tickling the Zealots, man. He's showing them what's up. And these, uh, one Zealot's actually quite low here. We're trading him into Ooh. the bunker, so... Jakes are not paying attention. Takes the big damage here. <laughs> Observe it somehow. What? Snuck out. I'm not sure when that happened. But yeah, I guess... That it snuck out forever ago. It was that a while ago. It just didn't do anything, unfortunately. But now we got tanks, tanks, and vultures on the way. No upgrades being researched. And Jakes are doubling down their one base play, adding on a Citadel of Doom behind this, so oh my God. everyone everyone's losing their mind a little bit. We're playing StarCraft like you did when you were like 13. The game was just fresh, no one knew what they were doing. <laughs> this game is wild in every possible way. This tank just gonna be like, nope, don't need any of that. Oh. <laughs> Again, Jakes are throwing away so many zealots unnecessarily in that bunk. He did not need to attack. All, all he needed here was a shuttle and go and kill his opponent's SVs. Nonetheless, he has a, a uh, Reaver out with Scarabs on the way, and like with no siege mode, it's not like this tank can actually really contest that. Doing a good job baiting these zealots, still again, so many zealots are full of this bunker, so unnecessarily, but still, it's still one base versus one base. And Jake's technically has better tech if there's no siege mode coming out. Ooh, yeah, but I mean, at some, at some point though, even these unseized tanks, as the number builds up, the third one's moving across the map now, he still have the access to make. Marines, if you want to, and now it's just this Reaver wasting uh -oh. shot on the first Vulture. Tanks moving forward here, gonna do good oh, damage. Oh, gonna die. First... Oh, it's dead. Okay, that might be his last hope actually, because these units continue running across. Two more goons coming out though, and they will definitely clear up these tanks. But I mean, I got to see continues to rally. Is he well, still clear the Marines? One I would love him to bring these Marines in as well. That make a big difference. But uh, try to focus fire that gateway. One tank gets taken out, and the other one gets cleaned up too, without losing a single goon here. Uh, I just, this is a, unexplored territory, but I do like that both players, like, you didn't think, like, SCV's like, oh, I didn't kill him, I don't know what to do. They're still trying to make Oh, they know what to do, they're just going to kill him. They, they're <laughs> going to keep killing until he's dead. I wish he would bring kill his him, Marines. Kill him forever, yeah. Yeah, just, just, just attack. It's a simple plan, you can't screw it up. 
Okay, Zealot's coming in here. I mean, he's going to take out his Marines, maybe. The Vulture gets taken out pretty quickly, too. Tank falls to the bunker again. I, I guess this bunker is actually paying for itself. I never would have thought. Well, I mean, did you think anything about this game was going to go the way it did? <laughs> uh, no. I did not. I don't know if those Marines oh. are, like, just misrallied or baiting the shots and the tanks can do the damage. The tanks doing good damage. Oh. Go take out that goon. Oh, Terra raiding us with a nice big party to watch. Oh, welcome. A very wild game. Thank you so much <laughs> for the love, Terra. Yeah, this game is, is crazy. Uh, well, that Reaver's out again, but I don't think it can win this fight. But those tanks are low. If it just gets the shot on the tanks, then it can do work. But it's going to get taken but out. These, but the tanks oh. have siege mode now. They don't oh. have to be aggressive. They can siege up. <laughs> Excuse me, what have you seen in this game? They don't have to be aggressive. I don't think you know which player you're dealing with. I go to SCB, does not keep units in his base. He rallies them. Oh my gosh, that siege mode though. That but is like the worst siege possible mode. siege mode. That is the worst possible siege mode. So I have mines too. Like, Spider Mines are research, Vulture's finally really? being added on behind oh us. Yeah. He researched both of them ages ago, just so we're focusing on these re small micro reaver battles. While both players just cannot get that next step. We're seeing a third game we going on. Jinxer, I to go to fourth game. You know what? You can't support this. This one. Like, there's a little limit. <laughs> oh my god, this game is all over the place. Okay, looks like J I Got Your ACV is finally gonna come in here with a decisive push, I think. I don't think Jakester can really defend this. The Reaver just started. I mean, without a shuttle, he can't do much. You, anyway. You've said down. that multiple times already. Hey, I never said <laughs> that. I never said that. I said, I, I think I Got Your ACV can win. I didn't say, like, this is the end. But yeah, <laughs> this is the end now. I'm saying it. GG. Wow, I don't even. I don't even know what we just watched. So those who will just join you for the raid, this is this is Coach People League, the league where players can learn from free coaching and fight each other in teams. And we are casting tier three games, so this is a bit of a lower level. These are generally sub 1350 MMR players. Uh, so we don't know what we're going to see in each game, and that one was an example. That was uh, that was something. Yeah, but we are just trying to do our best for the foreign scene to make sure everyone has a place to learn, find like likely skilled players, kind of be interested in doing it. and if you're interested in joining whether it's in the league or just to hang out there's a discord link that i just put in the chat feel free to join on in we cast games multiple times a week on this channel and then we have community casters so if you want to learn how to cast better play better you just get some help from coaches or just a place to hang out cpl is a great place to do it all right let's get into that game too because this is the best of three of course although does that one count as three wins like no, there's no, there's no bonus wins. I want to see more games of these players play. <laughs> All right. In the top left, in the Navy, we have I Got Your SCB. God only knows what horrors he has prepared for his opponent this game. And in the bottom right, in the Magenta Steel, is Jigster. Currently down one game in this best of three. Let's see. I mean, I... Oh, what is he doing? Okay, no, he's just mining. I, I, was, I was on watch <laughs> already for what he's going to do. Uh, I, yeah, I, would I, saw, be I looked at the production surprised. of that little... If, if I got your ACV just walls off, gets siege mode, gets a CC, that would be the least likely outcome, right? I feel like a player of I got your CC's stylistic alignment, I, I see them as a two-fact boy if we're playing a normal, quote-unquote normal game. They, like, they feel like they're a two-fact boy. Hmm. Well, we'll see. NCX says that game alone is worth the price of admission. Well, it is free, so... But it doesn't have to be. There is a subscribe button and a Kofi link. If you want to make this cost something, <laughs> that's up to you at any time. That is not how you get people to donate. Yeah, it's even great. It's free, but it doesn't have to be. You can fix this. It, well, it doesn't have to be. Hey, listen. Have you ever played like one of those games that Kickstarter's like, pay what you want, even nothing, if you yeah, want to take it? Yeah, and you like, do they take suggest those free like or... $250, $5, yeah. and $50. Yeah, or, you know, if you're not a nerd degenerate, you go to an art museum, it's a suggested price. You can play, pay whatever you want. Very few people pay the bare minimum. I'm just saying, you could. <laughs> hmm. Well, in any case, you're not... Oh, gosh. He's getting gas from the is factory a... again. I don't even know why he got gas last game, because he didn't build a factory for, like, four minutes after he got it. Uh, he's doing hey, it again. He's doing the fact, Shallow those... 3, his signature build. <laughs> Please, no. Like, uh, like, the thing is, I think this build could be really cool and interesting. I think you could definitely refine it to have a lot more punch to it, but this, like, this gas first opening is not the path to victory. It's very risky, though. Like, say say you were executing it well and you, like, figured out a good build order for it. The problem is if, if your opponent's, like, doing proxy, you just lose. Uh, and if your opponent finds your barracks, you probably just lose. Okay, so he's going to set up, like, a normal wall here. Uh, if he just goes siege mode and expands, I'm, I'm going to be swimming. Like, goddamn, these predictions, how are they so freaking cursed? 
Well, it's because we we were treated to Christmas. Christmas is once a year, man. Like you don't you get just at Christmas every day. You'd get bored of it. So we got I got your SUV. He is here to hang out. And looking like they're gonna make that oh, full wall. Is this a is this a no, real wall? No, it's not. No, it's not. Depot below the units will flow. Depot below, do you even Terran, bro? Like it's the worst place to put it. He could put it here and had a full wall. Actually, I don't know if it actually fits there. But either way, this is not gonna block. Um, not gonna block a probe, not gonna block a zealot, not even gonna block a Dark Templar. So this probe's just gonna walk on in and be like, oh, nice wall. Yeah, I mean, we'll see though. With the attempt to block everything off, the probe does manage to get on in. And it's gonna get there and see the gas being mined before. The CD's like, wait, no, you can't do that, come back. Well, I mean, he doesn't know when the gas was taken. You can't see how well, much your opponent has mined when they've got a refiner on it. Only if it's empty. Ah, ah that's just for us observers. We get yes. the benefit of knowledge. Yeah, you try in a game, you select an opponent's refinery or whatever type building, then it doesn't actually show. So, the factory just go down here. He's going to get a second one. He's still mining gas. So, it may just be a mistake. Tidfer, you never know. But he may be going for a second factory here. Again, if he just gets Siegmund and expands, oh, I'm going to be very mad. I mean, so, what we say about the higher level play. That if you don't take guys off the gas, that's usually two fact, you need yes. to tech, maybe you're doing something. This guy got gas real early and's not taking guys True. off. True. So if he so doesn't take if gas. You want to leave. If we ever see him doesn't don't not taking gas, just run and hide. There's already eight barracks in your base, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the misunderstanding of what an eight eight racks is. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this goon's gonna come up here and I guess that's the one unit that can't fit in this gap. Uh, Starport, yo, this, okay. see, I like this guy, look at this aggression, we're gonna yeah. begin a machine shop and a starport, maybe some kind of vulture drop, that'd be sick. Yeah, I expect most likely he's gonna go for mines of speed and then drop a bunch of vultures in the base here. I personally like speed, but both are definitely viable. Um, and yeah, okay, this is actually a legit build this time then. Bunch of marines getting made, so presumably he's gonna defend with those. You can defend this ramp, of course, with marines only, for now. Is there an SUV? No, I guess there isn't. I thought there was one, but maybe he died. Maybe he just went back on it. Did he even scout? Ooh. Wait, what? Oh, he's uh, going to drop above the natural. He's going to drop a tank above the natural, I think is the idea here. Even Which, that, that would make sense. Sorry, you. That would make sense a bit to keep making Marines then, because then if you're causing a little bit of chaos, maybe you actually get aggressive. Oh. You've, seen, you've seen his Marine aggression with the game one. Well, maybe he'll maybe load up really wants to get thing moving. and form Marines and like drop the tank to siege so like he drops the tank above the high ground the, the natural sorry on the high ground above the natural starts hitting those and at the same time he's dropping like four marines in the mirror line and four marines can kill probes reasonably fast yeah i mean there's definitely an opportunity here and with jakes are doing very normal conventional kind of openings here he still has a one gate expand adding on more gateways and a robo i think you can really catch someone playing like this off guard especially as these goons are down here and they're not trying to poke forward if you pull forward see a Ooh. lack of a tank, he you should be like, up two drop ships. What do you mean lack of a tank? Here's a tank right here. That is kind of well, out of no. though. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. Well, I, I meant if the goons were like poking at like the barracks and stuff, that you were like, you weren't getting shelled by a tank while you're doing it, that would be like, there's something weird going oh, on Oh, yeah, sure. I don't know what. So <laughs> he immediately queued up two drop ships. So presumably he's going to drop both locations at once. Not sure how many units he's going to have to do that, though. I guess he's going to have another tank by then. But this is going to be an all-out, just like, I'm killing all your probes in the next five seconds, good luck, type attack. <laughs> well, I'm excited to see it, because I got your SUV's actually still been doing pretty good. Good production Ooh. back here. Has He's loaded up a lot of Marines in one. Has the siege tanks back at home for the second one. I think going to wait for everything. And, like, he's still making SUVs. They're still a next step. So even if this yep. does damage, does end the game, like, he's still going to be a good spot. Ooh. Jake's are like, yeah, making robotic... There. He knows yeah, that this is a spot, he wants to keep an eye on it. And interestingly, a <laughs> shuttle came up, so yeah, we're going to see a Reaver here. Um, I've never seen me out in time, but say, like, the drop does some damage and it's cleaned up, a counterattack of a Reaver could actually definitely end the game. But look at this, he's trying to come up in here, this is the worst possible time, the Marines are in the dropship, he even sees the dropship. Unfortunately, not focused on your depot, he might have been able to get in there, but I don't know, two siege tanks a bit dicey. But yeah, he's definitely going to have to leave at least one behind. He needs to repair that. Well, well he's, he's making more, he doesn't have to leave, he's fine, he can just keep making stuff. Right, here we go. So, so Jake just saw the dropship, right? So, he should know. Oh my gosh, look at this. Seven marines and two tanks. Here we go. Here we don't go. We'll go soon. We'll go soon. <laughs> well, this, unfortunately, this is like really critical. When you're doing some kind of weird play like this, 
But anytime you're kind of leaving on a table for more reinforcement units, he wanted one more the, for an observer to hit a field or anything. He yeah, wanted that one more marine, of course. Gotta go with eight marines, can't just go with seven. Okay, so I don't see any goons in position here. Okay, there's this one, but I don't think that was actually meant to be in here. I think it's just incidentally in there. There's a shuttle with nothing in it. I, I don't know if Jax is really prepared for this. Zealot's coming out in the Citadel. Did he not notice the dropship? His goons were shooting at it. Uh oh. Uh, you you said he saw, man. Remember it's tier three? We said that about the his uh, units earlier saw, series as well. The, the, yeah, the like, report was, you know, filed on his desk, whether or not he read it, it's up to him. Okay, the Reaver's out. So if, if Jackson reacts quickly, the Reaver can drop and at least deal with any siege tanks pretty easily. But let's see. He, oh, he's going to set up like a little, a little... Oh no, the tanks are not dropping. He's dropping over dead ground. She needs to siege up soon. Okay, loads up the Zealots. Jake's just going to come right over here. The tank's still not unloading. Okay, there they go. You don't want to drop directly on top of this. The Marines will do huge damage. Oh, but he sieges up at the worst possible moment. The Reaver's going to get a shot off. Oh my gosh, there go your Marines. But there goes your Reaver too. Still not really a worthwhile trade if he gets all these tanks as well. Going to work on these probes. Yeah. These marines walked all the way down there to kill probes. What is what is this game? And they're actually doing work. Yeah, so the Reavers lost both the tanks. The marines get cleaned up, but there's some probe damage. I would say that everything looks pretty good about this, but there's no CC behind this yeah. on the high ground to float down. It did get Jake sort of back way off, and the dropships did live, so you can use them for other stuff as more tanks are being queued up here. But we're starting to see the money get a little bit out of control from the Terran player. And while I was praising, it's like, oh, he's making SV, he's got that next step. Without actually getting the expansion, not so much. Well, here you go, he's gonna take it now. Both players macro really falling behind there, trying to do all this fancy stuff. Both players like a thousand minerals plus, uh, <laughs> which is not what you want like eight minutes into the game. But yeah, he's taking this command set now. Pretty even on workers, but we will see pros pull ahead a bit. I know, it's not like a, a losing position for Terran at all, it's just not nice. He still has the dropships though, that's the key thing. You keep these dropships alive, you can threaten Protoss a lot with them. Um, so I think, I think I got your SV still definitely has options. Look at these dreams they're expecting a drop to come in here, but not right now. Well, something, um, because we always talk about stuff in the game, about like maybe your macro slipping or like strategy stuff. But I think we got a little bit of dead time. You want to talk about this Proto or this Terran base layout for production because three random factories yeah. all over the place. This feels like I'm a zooming out and I can't zoom out far enough because, like, the edge map thing. So, yeah, here's this one factory and the starport down here, and the furthest away one is like you know almost a full screen, no, a full extra screen away, which is not what you want. You want to just put it all down here where you can put it in one screen, and then so you can just uh, use your camera hotkey and rally back and forth. But yeah, this is going to be a lot harder from Jamaica. Look, I'm, I don't want to complain too much because at least he's making the factories, you know. A lot of players, when they bank up that money, they just keep trying to produce off one factory or whatever. So I, th I think he's doing all right. Um, but yeah, definitely could be improved. I mean, the wall the wall is just starting point as far as SimCity goes. So I'm not, I wasn't going to pick at it. But what about the Protoss? I mean, Protoss is arguably worse because he has this weird setup with his gateways in the back, almost blocking this off. There's a couple over here. hasn't utilized any of this space at all. Um, he can fit more yeah. tech above his natural, at least. Though. Yeah, both ball sides, definitely. It's, that's one of the things that can really elevate and make your mid-game macro a lot easier is having a base layer that even if it's not optimal just close together it's like because if i always try to like, just have like a vertical or horizontal line of gateway so i can just kind of rapid fire go real quick makes things a lot easier and it kind of will elevate your macro to the next step if you're at this kind of level okay so you see observer speed and shuttle speed coming up by the way just you should look at those two engines in the production tab you <laughs> see what i mean well, I, I I know you you see engines, but remember Carbot. I got different graphics going on, man. What so do the things look like I, I Carbot? Well, the shuttle has, it looks like a flame, but the observer just looks like a fast observer. It looks like the Zell, how it's just moving fast, has speed lines oh, yeah, behind yeah, yeah. it. That's all it's got. <laughs> okay, I got your SCV coming out here, but in the CC with basically no defense at all. Wolf's unit's still in the natural, so if Jigsaw finds out about it, he will crush it. But it looks like he might unfortunately just run into the natural and get deleted. Yeah, no zealots here. You don't be attacking into this, Jake. They're not going to retreat back in time. He's got the shuttle, but I think go for this at this point. You've lost too many well, injuries, but he's got reaver. a couple zealots. He's trying. Do not drop that reaver. It will die. <laughs> yeah, just get out of there. You've lost enough. Don't lose any more. Well, you're saying get out of there, but this shuttle can just fly sure, around. Can it's just going to fly. In her yeah, go for harass. Well, what if you just flew the shuttle in without losing 10 goons? That'd be good. Okay, <laughs> this reaver going to go to work now. There is a tank. Oh, it's going to die. SCB got it. Boom. Hero. Oh! <laughs> oh I pressed F5 and said F6 is how excited I'm about the SCB. But yeah, not a great attack for Jakester at all. Lost space these entire army. Killed just a few SCBs to show for it. And the is going to go up, and Jakester doesn't even know about it. Even if he did, he doesn't have any army to test it anymore. A Reaver comes out, at least the shuttle survived. But yeah, 
you do not want to attack. But is someone going to kill that zealot? By the way, I just assumed it would die. Um, <laughs> somebody? Anybody? Okay. I, I mean, the Nessies are trying to fight. They're basically Gundams, right? They're oh pretty good here. Oh my god, one HP. One HP. <laughs> Don't tell me about SCVs, man. Okay, there you go. Goliath comes out and steals the kill from those hardworking SCVs. But I mean, he's just coming across with these tanks. I think it's a fine move. What does what does Jake Trooper have to stop it? If only he bought those Marines too. Um, third CC is all well and good, but you got to use it. You need to make a series from that and transfer some as well. But nonetheless, I got Ruby can try and come in here. Now there's a bit of a formidable army. He needs anti-air because the problem is Zell bombs could just whittle this down. See, here's the problem with this bridge. You can't siege on this end and then leapfrog over here. You need to siege like halfway through or something. Otherwise, you're never going to get in there. Yeah, I mean, he's trying though. We're seeing him moving forward, but it's just a couple of Dragoons moving forward. Tanks in the back, not siege, not helping up here. Jake's actually picked a good time to move forward and try to whittle down some of his tank force. Yeah. He's trading quite effectively right now. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this is led with the Reaver getting some shots in too against the Tanks. This is just definitely going to be a good trade for Jake's. But the Reaver. Oh, okay, he doesn't get a good shot. The tank's not figuring out what to do. You, you don't want to try this bridge. Honestly, if you have this much of an advantage, just come down over here instead. Uh, would be better. But now he's lost quite a few tanks for not much to show for it. And siege up again. Oh, that poor speed zealot. He just wants to get in there, but those zealots. Oh, uh, those goons ruining his dreams. Oh, unseizes. These tanks just siege again, siege all over the place. Oh, that scarab! Man, that Reaver, it's like holding back the Terran army on its own. Oh, it's well, there's a shuttle that's just watching it die in the middle of the yeah. field, unfortunately, which could have been better here, but hey, both players at least got three bases up. We see yeah. Jake's there took that six a while ago. It's starting to saturate that, and the probe count's actually kind of climbing here, so... Now this seems to be better on... for Jake's death. Um, I got your yep. needs more workers, right? Even though 36 on three bases is extremely low. But I, I think Jake's can just keep trading like this and he'll be fine. Small-scale engagements always tend to favor the Protoss. So Jake's needs to, to keep trading, and I got your see he's trying to pull back and consolidate. He's still going to keep up the lives now, though. I mean, he's got all these gates, but not most of them are in use. Oh. Hey, by the way, I just like, like to point out in that last PvP, we still didn't see Storm. I just want to remind you. Oh, shut up. You <laughs> cursed it, man. You he didn't want it, it hard enough. Templar. All right, well, I guess I should talk about this game. The Green's going to come up here, and this is what I was saying. Like, Terran cannot trade efficiently with just these, like, small rally units. Like, eventually, Protoss just overwhelms with these gateways. And that's exactly what you see here. Now, I got Usvi still doing five on three bases here, but the problem is he has no tank count. Uh, he's gonna have a hell of a time rebuilding. Double armory going down. Uh, what's Jake's still gonna get up to? There you go. There's the Stargate and Archive. So looking like Arbiter here. I think these SCVs might be rallied here, I'm not sure. Well, he's gonna find that third, so maybe it was worth it. I get an idea of maybe a new angle attack from. I'm actually just very puzzled. I got your SCV is still going for a uh -oh. double armory. Like, this big late game kind of play when he's not playing this way, but an SCV swing over to the nine. Maybe I take another expansion. And the SCV production has kicked back in again, so maybe realizing I gotta like build up a little bit of a force here. And he's got these two dropships, a couple of vultures being rallied. We'll see if he wants to try to cross the bridge. Very ill advised. <laughs> yeah, so. I don't know why these dropships are here, they're just like free kills for the goons if they kill this army, because there's nothing in them, and he doesn't need vision, so... I don't it's know about what... sending a message, man. It's when you marine drop the dragoons to show them that you're not scared of zealot drops. Okay, well now with three tanks here and a mine in the way, I'm thinking, okay, you don't want to come across your appearance at all. But the dropships still could be doing something else. These marines, by the way, just the sole protectors of the third have been there for the whole time. Where's the Arbiter Tribunal? Man, this is a lot of zealot goon, though. Who needs Arbiters? Like, if he goes around the side, he can crush this army. As long as he doesn't try and come across the bridge, he has a good army. Yeah, this is one of the things about playing this map. You see a couple units getting baited mm -hmm. in here. I got your SP doing a good job just trying to pick off whatever they can, but yeah, you don't want to fight across the bridge. You can go up to the right, go around that way, or you can go by your third base and go around that big high ground pond on the left. Like, there's many safer ways to go, but that bridge is asking to die, so hopefully Jaxter doesn't get put precinct and just attack into a really bad situation. Yeah, he's to be getting his macro going somewhat now. I mean, his factory's are idle right now, but he has built how many? Six. Needs a couple more. Fourth base coming up, which I think is a good thing to do in your armies in this fourth position. In fact, fourth and fifth base. I just don't think he can maintain his position if Jaxter. Oh no. This is probably going to be a Zealot Massacre. Oh dear. And these well, groups, I mean, half his army is sitting idle, is attacking just one control group at a time, which is not what you want to do. You need to use everything, and obviously you can't get everything across this bridge, which is why you need to go to the side. If, if he just spends the entire game trying to break this bridge, I'm pretty sure Terran will win. Well, I actually don't... That blast trade wasn't that bad. A couple zealots to clear all the mines and get a couple tank kills, that particularly was not that bad. Oh, I think it was. But, he yeah, had like 12 zealots, and he killed one tank and a couple watches. I thought he killed a couple tanks, but maybe I'm sorry. Maybe it was too, even so it wouldn't be worth it. 
Especially with Terran on superior bases now, Protoss has neglected to expand. He's been sitting here throwing Mixed Versus Bridge. He's getting a Fleet Beacon Yo. instead, which I don't know if I like that. Because um, Terran's already right in his face. If Terran figures it out, Terran's not going to have a hard time pushing forward again if he comes here on the side here, though. Neither player can push across this bridge. And, and the big thing about getting a Fleet Beacon, cares about any era weapon upgrades are kind of bad. <laughs> Especially true, later true. later you are when there's more upgrades for the, the Terran Ground Force. I think you got to be very careful about when you're switching the carriers in a spot like this. Jakestar didn't but he's like not even exploring the other two routes that maybe go to the bottom left and get oh. other things. He's gonna try the bridge. He no, he can't see this the worst time though. But yeah, I, I think Terran can still trade well. Oh, but he pulls back, over microing his tanks to be honest. First Gen Siege, and then he was moving back. The Reaver drops in the middle. Well, he doesn't get the best scout, but he does get taken out. But I think Bruno still takes this out, just by virtue yeah. of having a lot bigger army and Terran and Siege and moving around too. Much. Look at the look at the bridge pathing, messing everything up. This I was talking about. It's yeah. so hard to move an army across, but yeah, it was enough to just overwhelm it eventually. Zaxter does break through, Terran's gonna have to retreat, and now this uh, pretty aggressive taking of the 4th and 5th base, if Zaxter just chases forward a little bit further, he's gonna see and be like, huh, interesting. <laughs> I think SCB's got in. so many factories, but he's not doing anything with them, even building more. Like, look at this bank right now. SCB's gonna fight though, I don't dislike that move, SCB's pretty strong. Yes, get him. Uh, but unfortunately this one's gonna show up too early today. Oh, does he see that other base? Oh, he doesn't see it yet. He might not know about the 9 o'clock. He does know about this uh, 12 o'clock, though, because the observer is there. But if he doesn't know about the 9 o'clock, maybe that'll s s uh, slip under the radar there. Let's just see if he's going to take it easily. Again, though, he, he needs to just keep those factories going. We build an army here. Because in theory, Terran has the far superior economy. He just doesn't be able to spend the money. And not good engagements, either. Can he actually hold this off? I don't know. This is pretty dicey for Terran right now. There's just no mines, nothing here to really slow things down, no buildings or anything. Jaxter has done a pretty decent job, but look, half his army's back at home. The Zealots are not here. They could be the big tool. The Marines the go. gonna find the 12 o'clock base. These Marines, absolute heroes, gonna hold off these goons. Are they actually gonna hold off these goons? Probably not. I don't Maybe. think they can quite do it. I don't think they can quite do it. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, that shuttle's empty. I thought there was a Reaver in there. I'm like, that'll end those goons. <laughs> but... Oh, look at this. The speed Zealots coming on these tanks as well. So it, look, it looks like. Oh, Protoss is barely not going to get in here. I think the rally will clean this up, barely. And look at that, two goons going to go to work on this third as well, going to cause massive damage. Sieging up, I don't know if Siege mode is what you want when uh, Zealots are in the middle of your mineral line. Nonetheless, it's going to do it. Picks up a tank, I think that was an accident, now it can't fight. Oh gosh, it's massive damage going down all over the place for... I got your severe right now, and his minerals spike up to 3,500, not using these factories, GG. That's just too much chaos, I think, for him to recover from. Well then, yeah, I think Easter. I think even if you see the stabilization, remember those, the carrier switch was on the way. Carriers are already made. That's true. So like you saw no Goliaths. Like I think that was going to be the one-two punch, but yeah. punch number one was enough to take it down. Yeah, and we saw behind it, you know, Jake's was doing a fine job rebuilding Zealot Goon as well. So it's not like he was rallying it across and continuing the attack, but he would have still had plenty of army to maybe attack again a little later. So definitely, I, I think it's it makes sense to leave there because everything's just spiraling out of control. Those I Marines, just love though, that. They we... almost did it. <laughs> they almost did it. Yeah, the high ground was pretty good there. I just love watching. I feel like every season we get like one or two wild card players that does whatever Definitely. they want. I think I got your SMV could be that guy this season. <laughs> well, is Kenzeki Ranko still playing? Yeah, he's of course he is. All right, in the top left, in the magenta still we have Jake Stone. And in the bottom left, in the red, we have I got your SMV. Both players tied at one one, which means we finally get to our third map. And this is fighting can, spirit? Can, can, yeah, it sounds like, uh, can you tell what it is? I can tell. You've, all, you've, you've only seen it for like 15 years. <laughs> right? You'd think it'd be easy, but yes, this is fighting spirit. So, blast from the past, maybe? That's not really the right way to put it, is it? The, the good old standard... <coughs> the, the, the vanilla the, ice cream of StarCraft. Yeah, the, the <laughs> butter on toast. What else? Hey, you can't say butter on toast. There's people that don't like this map. Oh, they exist. Are you saying there's people who like don't like butter on toast? No, I'm saying there's everyone likes oh, butter right. on toast. Well, Not some everyone people are like, well, I prefer margarine, you know, so I'm just covering all bases. Will we see the signature I got your SCV gas before barracks? I hope not. I, I think I, we like, will. I think he just does. <laughs> well, I would I would love to see another oh. game after this week. Maybe this is like you go to the coach and they're like, dude, stop doing this. Yeah, please. Like, if, if his coaches are watching, please give him a proper opening. Even if he wants to cheese, at least get him to go, like, you know, barracks in gas or whatever. But this SCB can be up pretty early. I don't know if it's scouting. It looks like it might be heading to the middle of the map. He might be throwing down proxy barracks here. If so, they're going to be a little late, but still potentially an option. 
Is this Shallow 3? The Revenge? Shallow 3. <laughs> could be. Could be. He's like, you know what? Normal build sucked. Didn't work. Oh no, he's scam cross. Maybe he just wanted to check no, for I, a proxy I, and thought he might as well, like, you know, just see if he happens to be cross position. He, oh, man. Yeah, there, there's the oh. gas again. So he's, he's about this. <laughs> it's like, but it is just not efficient. I don't know if this is maybe a StarCraft 2 thing, where, like, maybe getting the gas earlier and there because you can use it quicker might make more sense. I'm not particularly sure of anything like that, but I figure there's got to be some reason you're really poking this out, but seeing the lack of a proxy, seeing the lack of... Well, actually, no, he never went into the base. So yeah, he okay, doesn't well, actually he know chat, about it. Maybe you should tell him then that, like, if he's going to play an official match for his team, he should not do that. He wants to win. <laughs> That's also good coaching, I think. So somehow the Starcross lovers meet in, in the empty base. Is that probe trying to kill him or just trying to run away? I can't even tell. I guess they're both just leaving. I get, yeah, I guess they're both just leaving. And yeah, um, like playing in the game while you're having a good time in other forms is it's fun, but maybe not for not for CPL matches. I mean, if you want to win your match, I don't recommend. Hey, is he gonna put the proper wall this time? Yes, do it. Nice. He put you to the right turns delight. He's finally done it. So it looks like I got used to be gonna play a standard game again. I guess the the shallow three was an ascension special. Oh, I mean, three player, three base uh, map, you know, three barracks. <laughs> One I, I, barracks, I, I can't, three I, base. I, yeah. I'm trying to put it together. That bill was so wild. That game was like a treat to watch. So I'm glad we got to see it. Now we are seeing Jake's through here. The cyber core is done. We're, we are seeing uh, the uh, trigger okay. away. And, okay, yes. now the ranch. Just a little <laughs> bit late. <laughs> the long game for the scouts, man. You gotta, you gotta get that arrow. Right? <laughs> At least this CV is just. AFK right now. No factory going down either. J I always see these build kind of falling off the rails. Hitting 500 minerals at three minutes of the game is fairly fatal, to be honest. Um, we finally started that factory as a proxy. Well, look, which, look, you know, look at the 12. Option. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, there. I see it, but he could have started it like one minute earlier. So like, I still, I still yeah. have my objections. Well, with another SUV going across the map, maybe we're going to see more. But is your going to be able to see that? Should be able to pick that off here and. Well, he definitely wants to build two, but I think it's fine to build one in your base and just defend your tank, say, or something like that. That wouldn't be a terrible idea. Well, let's see if he does do it. See, that, that bunker, I don't know. I don't know about this. I feel like he should just build a factory here and make tanks. Because he can't build a second factory because this city's spotted already. He's going to have a nice scout here. He doesn't really see anything. I think you'd be better off just building a second factory here. Let's <laughs> Blow my nose. Yeah. yeah, the only thing I can think of for his bunker is that, like, you're already making Marines anyway, and then... It makes it so if someone's trying well, to bust up. But why? What if you just make factory like... and make tanks? You don't have to make marines. He has so much gas. He has 500 gas. Like, why do it this way? Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, he's, we're he, seeing he's we're seeing more stuff. The yeah. Yeah. Well, with more buildings being added to the 12 o'clock base, I think really making sure you hold that ramp seems pretty reasonable. And we're seeing you again from Jake's or this. There's no universe where you need two bunkers. Like, if your opponent's running, like, you know, a hundred zealots up there, like, you probably could have, like, got something else by that time anyway. Like, you don't need two bunkers. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's... overly defensive? Can we, are we saying it nice, or are we being real right now? I'm not sorry to tell. real. This is not... there's no point. It, it, yeah, it's I'm completely unnecessary. It's completely well, unnecessary. Well, see if Jake's to plays into his hands and runs, like, a hundred degrees up here. I, I, I don't know. There was that other bunker at the proxy where he ran like four zealots into it, and when I was like, "There's no point making that bunker," so I don't want to assume anything. Well, Jason's all Jason's already playing into his hands. All this stuff's forward. He's not going to break through ramp, but that means there's nothing at the natural for these proxy factories. Oh, true. Maybe he's just baiting him in. Hmm. Well, we'll see. No pollen wall going down at the natural either, which is definitely problematic. Okay, no mines coming up. Vulture and tank being produced, but no mines. I mean, Vulture's a fine unit, but mines definitely make them a lot better. Continuing to produce marines. He does not want this ramp busted. My god. These bunkers are actually, like, pretty OP. They're just, they don't have much range. It's their problem. Like, a bunker with four marines is actually, like, really good DPS. I just wish it didn't cost supply. Oh my god, this goon. How and why? I guess he's, the? he wants to take his third, right? So he's checking for a vulture here, but... Well, I mean, there is vultures here. <laughs> so now he knows. He pulls back his goons immediately. I, I guess this to be in big trouble right now. He doesn't have siege mode yet, or even mine, so I don't think he can really take this fight. These two goons, yes, but the three goons coming back, I don't think he can win. Well, here we go. 
Vulture's gonna add a little bit of DPS, but a lot of these tanks are gonna get taken out pretty easily, I think. Well, the first one, anyway. But yeah, this is not the trade you need. You need to keep those tanks alive. Takes out both goons, but three more coming. I don't think that tank can survive this. Yeah, he's just focus firing it. Doesn't even doesn't even respect the, vul the vultures at all. Yeah, the oh, fact that Steve is about to finish, like it's not waiting Hit that through tank, here. Please, okay, please. <laughs> All right, takes it all out. And I mean, this proxy's just gonna get killed, and that's his only factories, right? He has the bunkers defending the ramp, so he has that going for him, but uh... He's got a bunker defending the factory, but there's no more reason. <laughs> Bunker man. <laughs> Not gonna help, but so... as long as he gets up this ramp. Oh, he even takes out the SCB. So, so bunkers realizing... don't just defend things on the road. They're the building to put Marines into. So unfortunately, this bunker not gonna help. We're gonna lose a very big amount of tech here. And it's not going to be working out well while Jakester is doing the same Oof. thing they've been doing, working towards a Reaver, which means what's in the base of I Got Your SV for Anti-Air? I guess the Starport's on the way. Could be a Wraith? I don't know. I don't think it's going to do any good. He's going to try and drop it. He has no factory to build stuff, right? So I don't see what he can do here. He's not trying to lift these factories yet. He's still trying to build tanks, which honestly is just donating units. Not that you could probably make a home if you lift it. Okay, it is going to be Wraiths, I guess. Which I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of happy we get to see that. I guess more marines coming out. The bunkers are full. All right. So the blind, as you mentioned earlier, is like, let's be optimistic, and he said, no, let's be real. Race first dragoons. Let's be real. No, it doesn't work. Well, it just does not work. Well, if you don't have an observer with your goons. Oh, there's also a reaver heading for I got to be space, and the only unit he has is marines. <laughs> Although it is heading straight for the double bunker. Hang on. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, don't do Hang it. Hang on, please. He, he's going straight to the double bunker. <laughs> oh no. Is this real? Jake's third, no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we'll show that guy who's boss. <laughs> it looked like it blew itself up. Did you see that? Oh hey, my god. Hey, do you know why that worked? Because yeah. the bunker. <laughs> if he didn't build that second bunker on the right, he wouldn't have got it. Wow. I guess, I guess I got True CVs playing at a level above us, that's amazing. Wow. Yeah, he is, he is playing coloring book while we are trying to play checkers, and it's just, <laughs> we're not on the same page. <laughs> like, he can color inside work. the lines, man, like, it's no problem for him. Uh, okay, these zealots coming up here, I, I, if they try and bust this ramp, they are going to regret it. I will say that much. Oh my gosh. Alright, Jigster. I see you literally <laughs> started the episode, <laughs> sorry, the moment that you show up, oh, oh no. Gosh. Okay, he does cancel. Nice cancel there. All right, he's gonna try it. He's gonna try it. But little does he know, there's two bunkers waiting for him. Does wisely turn back at least a little bit. Like he's still risking his life. Uh, but see, here's the problem: with bunkers. They don't have very much range. He literally just hit that. <laughs> oh, right, here comes God. around two. Oh, he's gonna repair. He needs to repair that. He needs to repair that. Yeah, it, it'd be nice here. And we are seeing the next at the twelve. Ooh. The wraith counts being not revealed and built up. So. Maybe? Uh, I don't know. Well, that boon's gonna die, which is nice. Oh, this is too late, but it's alright, he can build another bunker. Oh, no, Marine, he didn't have to die. Pity. We're seeing cannons. Where are cannons being built? From Protoss. Uh, at the third, he's building one to hit this factory. <laughs> he's building okay. two to hit this factory. Sure. This factory's not gonna escape. The race. Uh, I, mean, I mean, sure, right? Alright, the race moving now. It's. Did he build any? Oh, the bunker is still putting in work, by the way. Zelt's still trying to get up there, but not going to succeed. Where's the observers? Surely he built one. Oh my gosh. They're, I see him in production, but He's yeah. Close. Actually, on the map, I don't see it. There's nothing Alright, well, here come the wraith. Anyway. Oh my gosh. I hope it doesn't fly into his pants. He decloaked! Why did you decloak? That's a waste of energy. It costs 25 every time you cloak. Okay, but well now the goons are here. He cloaks again. Goons are like, oh no, what do we do? Yeah, they're gonna tickle one goon together. It's four race and they are slowly killing one dragoon. The factory died to can so significantly faster. Okay, can, this can is, can um... it coming up. Okay, the, the energy runs out, that's the problem because he's double cloaked, and now you can't even fight, you just have to run. Well, he did kill a lot of pros. I'll give one thing to SCV. Even though he's on one base, he does make good amounts of SCVs, but meanwhile, the double bunker defense was not as impenetrable as once thought. And it, it's looking shaky right now. The speed zealots baiting those marines is gonna take him out. Uh -oh, the rates are still in. doing damage. He's finding whatever angles he can here. Yeah, but losing some two goons, unfortunately. But, but the the, these two speed zealots and one goon can like destroy anything at home. Ooh, well, can he do it? What is hey, happening? Speed zealots cannot destroy rates. 
That is true. Remember, we're, we're, we're playing we're playing real big brain stuff here, and with only the one goon here, I think it has 11 kills. Jesus Christ! Make it <laughs> swell. Your goon has 11. He can take out that right I think. Oh, but he's got friends. Oh, and he's got cloak. Nice. 12 kills. All right. 12 kills. Oh my gosh. All right. So very costly. Oh, there's a marine behind guess... the mineral line. He was waiting for this. Oh no, there's no block though. Stop them. Right, well, science facility on the way, still working on the Wraith production. Uh, can't spend the money for our guy if he needs to take another expansion or add in factories or something to reduce. The Wraiths try to do what they can, one dragoon getting sent over and unfortunately can't detect, but still not even dying significantly fast. This is this is going to be pretty hard for a race to work. And, like, I, do, I can't like sugarcoat this one to make it sound nice. Like This really is a game for Jakester. He's in such a good position at this point. Getting... Despite the supply being reasonably close. Well, he has no pros, that's why. He only has 30 pros on three bases, which is extremely low. But he's making them... Well, okay, he's making them at one nexus, which is not what you want to do. You're making them all three nexus. You really need to put off that count. Because that's what's stopping him right now. That's why he's sending like single units across. And like, I got used to he does only have one base, but he, he made a good amount of SCVs for one base at least. Um, but upgrades coming up for Jakester, he's even getting Temple Archives and Storms absolutely destroy Wraiths if this game somehow gets to a point where he has like 20 Wraiths or something, Storm will decimate them. See, I don't know about Reaver Shuttle, I don't think that's the answer to Cloaked Wraiths, to be honest. Where is Observers? <laughs> okay, he has two Observers at Natural, that'll be enough. Yes, he's, yeah, he's, he, yeah, he's got some Observers now, and I don't think uh, Guy RSV, yeah, he still doesn't have a scan or anything, it's not like he's going to be able to kill them all. Finally adding some factories back on, so... We're gonna be getting some kind of build here to SCV did sneak out to the six, but Jinxer has an army and is moving across the map, and I got your SV just has a race, which will not be adequate defense, unfortunately. I'm still concerned about the lack of SCV's uh, probes rather than Jinxer, but nonetheless, this army's coming in. I mean, yeah, I don't think four race can do it. I, I uh, don't no fly the shuttle, it's a do death again, please. Oh, well, <laughs> the Reaver not doing much work. Oh no, he doesn't have a block here, the depot never got rebuilt. The race trying to do their best, but it's going to take them like five minutes to kill all these zealots. Oh my gosh. It, it's so useless, like the race being is just trying to pick those guys off. And the CC needs to be cancelled before it dies. Oh, it does cancel. Okay, that's a nice move at least. There's plenty of money back here, but I don't think he can survive. Single Marines coming out trying to fight, but just getting destroyed instantly by these zealots. I think this might be the end. It seems like it, because even like the production on the factory is not churning out vultures or anything. The SV count's so low at this point. Wraiths are doing the best they can, but even they are just Their not going to be Their best is not good enough. Their best yeah. is not good enough at all. How long is that good though? Oh, not long enough. GG, congrats. Jake's hitting a 2 1. Awesome. At, at, least he's, at least he's having a good time and having a good attitude. Oh my about god, he probably had the best time that game. <laughs> that looks uh, extremely fun by certain definitions. <laughs> Hey, we had fun. We had fun yeah, casting and seeing unique That's strategies. True. It is fun. That's one word for them. Unique strategies, yeah. He was making a physics lab, I'd just like to point out. I'm sad we didn't get to that point, but... Hmm, interesting. Alright, so that takes no. us into our last scene <laughs> of the night, right? Yep, we got one more. We do finally get to see the Zerg pieces in play. Oh, really? Although, unfortunately, no more Terran. No Terran for you. Like, Terran shenanigans are done. We're seeing a little more Protoss action tonight. Because we saw such, like, you know, honorable straight-up builds from our Terran just there, right? Alright. Oh, yeah, for sure. Here we are on Ascension in the 12 o'clock in the yellow. We have N1N. What's the actual name there? Do you know? Is that it? That That, that is the actual name. Great. And in the bottom right, we have N York in the grey. So, so, PVZ on Ascension. Uh, uh, that, that is Yorkie. I think also Mikey. Oh, Yorkie. So, that's just him. My bad. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so how do we say N underscore one N? Uh, it looks like an emoji face. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go Nin. Nin sounds good. Yeah, I'm good. going to Nin too. It's pro probably the underscore one is supposed to make like a U or something. It's none, but we're messing it up. Uh, like it looks to me like one of those like cute like uwu kind of emoji faces. To bet me a someone bit. stepped official into its face. I mean, if someone was in your face like doing uwu stuff you probably would want to <laughs> <laughs> so maybe <laughs> all right well will we see the wackiest of builds again i mean uh, protoss already building his pylon in the normal position so i'm already disappointed by this game compared to the last one to be honest with you <laughs> all right well so we because we haven't really seen the first zerg three hatch hydra on this map scares the crap out of me <laughs> yeah like, fair so enough. just straight up it's it's very difficult i think 
because you don't have the ramp to fall back to, I think building a good solid wall here can be a little bit tricky sometimes. And with all the places to move around, especially with the high grounds nearby to retreat to, I think you could be very aggressive with a good three edge hydro ball. Mm. So we saw Zerg, by the way, go for a pretty standard opening with only one the wall. Not trying to get away with anything too crazy. And Forge coming up first as well, since he didn't get that first scout. Both players playing pretty safe. Honestly, compared kind to of the last game, this looks a lot more solid so far. Yeah, everything's seeming pretty reasonable so far. I do think, though, like that pylon's so far forward. I, I've got in trouble with situations like that. It, depending on where he puts the gateway, it's either going to block off some of the places you could put cans, or it's going to be easily snipeable. So, well, well hopefully, it doesn't come right, across. Put the gateway on the right, then you just have like a one cell gap. Isn't that good? Like, I think he's about to show us. Oh no, he's going to cannon. Yeah, you put the gateway just yeah. like below that. I think it's good. Well, we'll, we'll see if yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking of like where you'd put cans if you needed more. Like, like that's always what I'm kind of looking for. Not, not the immediate trouble on this map. Where I think he is, the wall's gonna be definitely serviceable for what he's doing right here. Ashry going down behind this and setting up for a nexus. So, Nins, uh, Nins play is looking much more stable. Actually, both sides looking a lot more stable compared to some of the stuff we've seen tonight. Yeah, definitely. Link's coming out here. He's gonna harass this probe. I mean, you can theoretically keep it alive, but it is tricky to do, especially when you're trying to keep up with your macro, so... I wouldn't I wouldn't be disappointed at all if it died, but we see gas coming up just on two base here. No drone going for third base yet, so we might see some maybe 2 hatch meter action. Unclear at this time. I, maybe he'll just send yeah. the drone for it a hatchery a bit later. More links coming out here. And uh, Nins... Nins build's kind of far off a bit. This yes. is very late for an extra gateway and didn't add on extra cans behind this. And Yorkie did go up Ooh, to six lanes, which was not scouted because the probe trying to run away. So Ooh. I think if you move forward and be aggressive, that I mean, the Overlord sees what you're dealing with here. Gateway's on the way, but I think there's a gap to the right of it between yes, that and yes, the little... Yeah, so this could cause a lot of trouble here when six lanes show up yeah. and there's not adequate defense. He could easily run through and have four lanes in the main. Four lanes is a very deadly amount. But he needs to consolidate, get it all together, and then go in. Looks like he might do just that. But yeah, it'll be an easy run by. There's nothing to block here. There's not even a probe here. Easy gonna go for it. Third hatch does go down, by the way. So despite the slightly early guess, uh, Yorkie going with a pretty standard opening so far. Looks like he's a bit timid to try because you don't actually see, right? Uh, whether there's. Oh, wait, there's an overlord. Hmm. Yeah, there's an overlord. He sees everything. <laughs> well, what's his excuse? I don't know. Oh, maybe, maybe not. Put he's... something in. Put okay. something in cancel it right away. So here's free minerals being donated. But. Nexus does finish up. We're seeing a gas done, but not being mined. This is delaying tech and no cyber core as well. So, uh, stuff from then all falling behind a little bit. If Yorkie was doing something very lair focused, so as you see the lair on the way, and you're really trying to be aggressive, I think you can get something out before you would have the adequate tech. Because well, here he goes, though. A little bit off and he decides here comes this is the, the time. Oh, and he's going to get in with four. There's a cannon here already, though. So, what? playing right into Nin's hands. Nin making these extra cannons for his cyber, but, uh,. Kind of worked out, I guess, because they killed Ling. Uh, still has two over here, though. Let's see if he can get any harassed. So, Pong going down, but that's kind of easy because of these limbs, unfortunately. Well, the, the right side of the mineral line takes out of cannon range, too. So, you can Ooh, it's stop dicey, though, a couple. You know, if you right click on a probe and chase it a bit to the left, then you're going to lose a Ling suddenly and just like a hole. I mean, yeah, definitely this cannon could be in better position. But yeah, I, I guess these Ling's really aren't going to get much done because it's still here now, too. So, fair enough. But I, I still don't think he should have made that cannon, but uh, now that he has, it kind of works out. Yeah, I, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that you see little players do, where it's like, I lose to Lynch running through my base all the time, and there, there's, there's a choice of fixing is not make the better wall, it's just, well, if I'm making the cannon the main ahead of time, like it's, <laughs> it works when it works, but it oh. should never get to that point, it's hopefully this something that gets like higher. It's just like the battle cruises on TDT, like, oh, I'm getting contained, you know, so I should go battle cruises faster, no, just don't get contained. Right, yeah, well, we are seeing Stargate on the way started the exact same time as the Spire. That could cause problems for the pro player. But we'll see if there's actually a commitment to Mutas or if it's just going to be for Scourge and more normal kind of build. As both players building up a little bit unoptimally, but it's it's the general look. It's what you're expecting from both sides. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think Zerg's joining up reasonably well. Definitely, like, you know, both players could have macroed better, but it is looking fairly normal compared to the last one. I guess the bar has been lowered by that one. Um, and yeah, <laughs> the very standard opening with this. Uh, presumably, 3 hatch Spire into 5 hatch Hydra. He's already got 4 hatch going. I assume he's going to go into 5 hatch Hydra. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, no second gas, so it's unlikely to be an immediate play. Yeah. 
I mean, it could be enough just to kind of keep things honest. Uh, plus one air weapons on the way, so despite things being a little delayed, and then still going to favor getting some Corsair and get everything. First Corsair still not in production yet, though, so I feel like this upgrade could have waited a little bit, but honestly, it's just a supply block, so just things get a little bit out of sorts. As that fifth hatchery is on the way, Spire's about to complete, so most like the Zerg side looking pretty comfortable right now. The work kind of looks good. They got the three bases up, and Protoss can't comfortably move out to the map. Why is this Corsair so delayed? He's finished, right? Oh, and look, he is making Mutalist. He, he, was, he was supply blocked. Oh. Okay, well, he is making Mutalist, so there's not actually be a big impact. But he needs a couple scouts to back him up, to be honest. It's five, five meters versus one Corsair and a cannon. Pretty sure the Corsair and a cannon would barely win that. Um, unless you micro the one. Couple skirts though, that changes the equation completely. I'm getting more cannons already. Look at this. Nim is expecting Muna for sure. Yeah, which he didn't really get good scouting info of. But if he moves out with the first Corsair to get scouting info, then that's not there to help the cannon. And he's gonna move it. But yeah, because it's so late, the Muna's are already out. They catch it in the middle of the map. Again, if he had Scourge, very different. But he can pick it off the Muna's maybe before he notices. Oh. Oh, they're so close. But... And Corsair is going to reveal here. Does Mios go for the attack? Or they go to kill his Corsair? And it's getting really good scouting info. Did not see any Mutas here. And they do poke forward. I think the pilot might have caught vision of them. Yeah, I mean, I think these Mutas are going to come back and defend. Still no scourge being made. Truly key unit against Corsairs. Because they can just run and run away now. The Mutas kind of just showing up a bit late to the party. Like, damn, where'd he go? Which way did that Corsair go? Proto setting up, adding more gateways, adding this Templar Archive, looking like a decent setup here. So he's transitioning into Hive today. I guess he's using these meters back up, maybe they can pick up Templars later. So here we go. Yeah. Uh, trying to poke forward here. You can at least whittle down these buildings, there's no real anti-air here to speak of. And managed to get a couple of the Zealots as they pop out, with three cans in the main though. Good diligent defense for being ready for these meters. So you're going to have a hard time getting anything too far done. Corsair is even going to move forward here, and it looks like we're going to see a move out of Zealots as well to get some kind of reaction from the Zerg. Yeah, Zealot speed is still a fair way off finishing. Uh, they might finish just as they arrive, but I mean, if these Hydras here and the Mutas can come and defend as well, I don't expect this will do much. In fact, he probably should not attack because he's going to lose these Zealots. Well... Yeah, I like this kind of move out more when there's like eight Zealots is kind of the usual number for this kind of first attack or more. So four coming in to try and do what they can. Two Hydras go down, but the Mutas are going to be able to do big damage here. That's reinforcing Hydras, comfort and defense. That's and a lot of trying to fight... I would like going maybe try to go for a couple drone kills instead of trying to fight the army. But I you think don't really you get too much done. It's kind of a donation. I think you just turn around the left. When you see that this Hydra's up and the Mutas are at home, you just go, okay, I better preserve my army. But now he's lost like, what, six Zealots for nothing? He killed like three Hydras? Adding more gateways yeah, at least, so you're trying to make more. That's a good move when you're banking money like this. And he does have the Templars coming up. I didn't see if he started Storm, but he might have already finished it. I don't know if it started now. It just, just started, just started. Okay. But I know Zerg, Zerg looks pretty strong here to me. Like, he's just going to have so many Hydras. And, like, you can you can really contain Protoss here on this high ground in that very narrow choke. I don't really see anything happening. And Zerg's even taking their fourth base on the map. And that's usually the kind of the trouble spot if you're not really building to a big two base push and threatening that fourth base where Zerg can easily start getting out of control. Even trying to find a little more value with these mutas, there's a pocket by the natural that's a little harder to defend, but not overstaying, nothing doing too aggressive here. It's both players build up, and I'd love to see a couple more drones out of Yorkie, I think, as you're getting that fourth base, but honestly, both sides, this, this is much more refined tier three play compared to definitely, some definitely. of the shenanigans. These players look so much stronger. Interesting that Nin went straight for the Archon here, by the way. Didn't try and preserve the energy on these Templars. But yeah, I, I am uh, quite impressed with York's uh, like macro here. He's made a lot of hydras, keeping his money low. And then, like I said, even though he's banking money, he did add on gates like, to kind of try and spend it. So that's a good move. Uh, and yeah, Rick plays with a fairly formidable army, but Zerg just looks so much stronger right now. Even finished plus one range already. What does Protoss have? Plus one weapons only. So I don't know. Nah, this looks pretty dicey for Protoss. And like, see Zerg's getting this position where he has this ramp. And how the hell is Protoss going to get out here? Well, I mean, you can move out, it's just the units are kind of blocking the way, and there is a storm available, so if it's magic, maybe it does enough, if but all those uh, yeah, to on one Archon's... Spot, sure. <laughs> yeah, there you see the is going to poke forward, see what kind of defense is here, the Corsair is already ready to react, and they got plus one air weapons, so they're going to be pretty potent, but this Zerg army off to that left side, pretty potent, it's going to have high ground advantage, so... If Nin moves out in a really bad spot, he opens up for a giant counterattack, or it just takes a really bad fight. Well, it looks like that might be what happens if he goes up this ramp. 
be zealots. Use the storm. You have one storm, you have to use it. Oh no, this is uh, going to be a zealot storm. He needs to pull back right away or he's going to lose all these. And he does not pull back. Looks like every zealot's going to fall there. And that's most of his army. The goons struggling to get out, but they cannot. And now all the zealots are gone. Just like that. They killed what? Like five units? All the Corsairs are about to fall as well. All these Hydras and Mutals combined. Uh-oh. I was yeah, trying to some goons. One, one big storm possible is going to hit. It's yeah. a good storm, but it ain't going to be good enough. It kills off some Hydras, but still down to an Archon. Just some... Uh, some Dragoons back here, not enough energy to know still for a while. All the cans going down, so many Hydras still left alive. Yorkie's army is looking pretty formidable, and I don't know if they could hold on much longer. This is where you don't want your army to fight in three separate pieces. GG, you have the Zealots, then like the Archon and Storm, and then the Goons all fought separately. Oh, and the Corsairs, so it all just kind of got picked off one by one. Yeah, not, not what you're looking to see sometimes, but... Engaging with those Pro's army is definitely, it can be tricky to get all the coordinate the way you want it to. But a big part of it, I think, was just preemptively morphing the Archon. It helps against mutants yeah. if you see a lot of aggression, but you had plenty of Corsairs with plus one. It really was unnecessary. And there was only like five Mutalists, so yeah, I agree completely. Um, if you had more Storms, it makes a difference. And still, honestly, as soon as he threw away those Zealots, I think he was pretty doomed. But alright, we're going to game two, it is best of three. Polaris Rhapsody. We've been seeing some weird stuff on this one, and we'll see how these guys can move their army around here. A little bit different to move on Polaris Rhapsody, but we'll see how this one goes. Alright, in the top right, in the peach here, we have Nin. In the bottom right, in the blue, we have Yorkie, currently up one game. Going into Polaris Rhapsody, like I was saying before, it's Twilight, then Twilight. Yeah, it's uh, I think it's aesthetically pleasing. You go off to travel to far distant worlds and you come back home. Once you escape from Tyrus, you finally get back to Ayr and play on Fighting Spirit, I don't know. Oh god, no. No Shakuras, man. I'm, I hate that that's still on the ladder. No, I hate I, that I mean, I mean so the much. planet Shakuras, because that's what this task it is. Uh, I don't know the lore, man. I just know Shakuras, like, temple and plateau. And right. <laughs> the Starcraft maps. Yeah, Shakuras temple was pretty bad. Shakura's Plateau, remind me of that one? Oh, that's the one we have in... Oh, no, Shakura's Temple is the Brutal Sarkar. one. Shakura's Plateau is the Starcraft 2 one. That's right, I was getting mixed up. Yeah, Starcraft Sarkar 2. Yeah, right. Starcraft 2 is a fun game. Everyone should play it. It's also free to play. You but Shakura's like Plateau is not a fun map. Oh, yeah, it's a very old map. It was fun at the time. <laughs> literally has a spot hidden by bushes, literally just so you can put proxy gates there. That's it's only purpose. Play. I, was a, I was a pro S player, man. What do you want from me? Oh, <laughs> Where you can uh, warp up high ground with low ground pylons. Well, you <laughs> like, can't do on, that anymore. Man, I so. love it. No, not in ages, but when you could. <laughs> it was pretty fun. Back when you could. Another overpool opening, and looking like another forge opening. So, similar style from both players, especially I think at tier 3, you do see a lot of one opener get used to it. You don't need to learn a whole bunch of stuff Definitely. early. Though. Definitely, that's the way to go. Hey, this probably going to come up pretty early, get a, get a good idea what's going on. Or is it? I don't, yeah, there's the forge on the way, gonna get all that good scouting info. And you see the Overlord just barely moving with the spawning pool, that, that kind of health. You should know it's overpool, so you can go straight into Nexus, which is what we saw in the first game. So hopefully we're seeing the same kind of reaction from it. Yeah, it was just the follow-up that was weird with the extra cannons, the late cyber and so on. Um, oh, he wants to block this uh, hatchery, and the drone was kind of like, oh, I don't want it. No, you, you have it. Oh, <laughs> no, he's gonna block it again. Or is he? Oh, his broke wasn't in position, unfortunate. So that does go down. Uh, that's, that's, well, that's quite nice for Zerg. Yeah, which also means that if the pro doesn't get back in the main, it's not going to be a little bit caught off guard by what's going on with these links. And you are seeing a can on the way, still no Nexus started. Yeah, he went for a second pylon to put. Oh, a third pylon. Rather. Uh, oh. Oh, that's where they are. I'm like, I don't see them in his base. Can you fit a can in there? Does it actually fit? Yes. Yes. Oh my god. Finally, my favorite strategy. He doesn't see it. Oh, but he knows. He knows. He's going to have a look. Oh, he totally does. Oh. Well, he, he didn't see it until the links went, but he knew. Like, yeah, just cancel, cancel and abort. You tried your best, but yeah. Oh, it's a shame he didn't cancel that here. first pylon, but yeah, there's already a big deficit for Protoss here. Uh, he's going to throw his Nexus down, but uh, that's very unfortunate for Protoss. You know I want to see it. He should have, like, snuck his probe up here on the high grounds to start building cannons there. <laughs> that would be great. Well, well to... Uh... To make you happy, it's not a CPL thing, but I am cannon rushing a lot on some of the maps. <laughs> Great. It's fun. You're not going to do it's it. It's fun. It's getting me wins. I hopefully I don't play Protoss vs Zerg, man. I got into a PVT. Oh, hey, you're dodging so. the entire matchup. Not by choice. If I got to choose what matchup I play, I'd only play Protoss vs Protoss. 
I see. Well, if I could choose one, I'd probably play TVT. Yeah, see, like, I'm going for wins. PvP is my best matchup. Fair enough. Well, I, I, when I say that, I am too. I think TVT is definitely my best matchup. Yeah, I would agree with that. Now, we are seeing a third hatchery on the way down to 6 o'clock base and a fast lair again, so, Yorkie, you're not doing any kind this of real ridiculous shenanigans. This is a lot faster than the last game, this lair. Yes, it is. <laughs> so, it might be a lot faster meter timing. I mean, I know he seems to like the meters. He got decent value out of them last time, I think. I mean, forcing that Archon out was definitely worth it. Yeah, he wasn't really trying to push too far here, and Nin did kind of over defend more than you would think you would need. But, st but still, with the gateway just starting, and there's a giant hole to the right. This oh, wall, yeah. I, I I don't love this wall. An ultra <laughs> size hole. hole. Let's call it. Yeah, I, I'm gonna call it speed links. Do whatever they want size the wall. Like it's gonna it's gonna be a bit of a problem. One gets baited into cans for free. It does see two cans out the front, so. If Yorkie wants to be really economic, you, you know it's a late gateway and there's two cans at the front, you can just go crazy. Drone to your heart's content, but the Spire is on the way before the Cyber Corps even started. This could yeah. be a problem. He's already getting a can in the main again, which uh, still no side though. Like, delaying this gateway this much is not worth it, I don't think. Um, but nonetheless, that cannon will be there in case we do this out. Still no second gas from Yorkie though, so he's not super committed to doing this uh, middleless aggression. I was going to say, like, I really want to see him make a scourge again if there is a Stargate. But like you say, like this, the Stargate's not even going to be up in time. Cybercore still hasn't started. To be fair, I guess you have to take your gas first, so fair. But still, where's that Cyber? Where's that Cyber? Well, it's, it's gonna it's gonna be a while away at this point, but see, that Spire already halfway and drone. The drone's being added on as well, and a second gas much quicker this game than we saw last one. So I think this is actually gonna be a commitment to the mutants. Yeah, could be, could be. Um, I I think it would, it would make a lot more sense getting that faster layer and going for the immediately. I think I think that's a good way to do it. Um, and he still has an option of drilling up this third base for sure. And like you say, he saw those two cannons, so you know he's not gonna be a big cell aggression. He saw how late the gateway was, right? More cannons going up though. I mean, Nin is preparing for the Mutalist, but not to survive after that point. The Mutalist will arrive at his base, and he won't die, but then what is he going to do? Because he still doesn't have a cyber. Well, see, that's the thing. One cannon against a decent amount of Mutas, you die anyway. A decent like, amount of Mutas, he says. Up. He's making like three right now, but yeah. He, he's low on money. He's working towards it, my friend. He's got to get there. He's saving a little bit from each paycheck for his Mutalists. Yeah, they're on layaway. They're coming. Don't worry <laughs> for Christmas. <laughs> He's got a no interest plan for those Mutalists. Needs Overlords right now, though. In any case, okay, five Mutalists can pop out. Yeah, five Mutalists can definitely take a cannon, right? What do you have left over? Three? Something like that? Something like that, but even if you just wait for the Overlord, you'll have plenty of money and gas banked up. You can go up to like ten. Because this Cybercore is not even done yet. Yeah, it's true. He has plenty of time. And if Protoss does just make like three cannons each base, you've kind of done your work already. Looks like he's gonna go with this. We need Baron for the Cyber, says NTX. Yes. That's right. Baron for the Cyber? What? <laughs> League reference. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Saying you need the gold from Baron for it. Oh, yeah, okay. I got it now. Like, my mind was not thinking that way. Now, it is drones behind this. A lot of drones behind this. So it's just going to be mutas just to slow things down. But I think when he rolls up in this base, like, there's no anti air. The Stargate's just started now? What? I could have won this game. <laughs> I don't think he's going to go for I'm... the cannon. I think he's going to see the cannon and back off. That's my guess. Well, you see the Stargate not done. Pokes off. He's going to try to get whatever he can here. And actually, that cannon in the main doesn't cover the top part. You can start wheeling guys the off gas. the gas at the very least. He still has to move out immediately as response, and I like that because that forces him to just come deal with them. And yeah, he chooses not to dive in the cannon, especially since he's joining up behind this. I think it kind of makes sense. If you're not making a bunch of mutalists, you don't want to trade them off like that. And look at that, he can keep the Zealots home. His opponent's still way behind the tech. Of course, they're coming out. But it is a shame he didn't commit and just kept making heaps of mutalists. He actually could have won just coming in here with a big swarm. Yeah, I would say so. And we got the Hydra Den on the way with the five hatchery, so. Gonna be able to start moving into whatever hydro production you really want to go for here. With all this tech so delayed, like Nin saw mutas. He has to respect them. He's gotta to work towards some kind of anti-air, which is gonna slow down your storm, your zealot legs, like all the things you're really looking for. Zealot legs just getting kind of started now. Yeah, for sure. And going up to five. Oh, no, there's an evolution chamber. I was gonna say, he's gonna try and go up to five hatch again. Well, he's already on four. I assume there's two. Four there's four two evo chambers. Yes. I thought I thought they were both hatcheries, but they're both hatcheries. Oh, he has another one in his main. Okay, well, I don't like the yeah. fact he put it in his main. I really want to use that for the city, but nonetheless, he is on five hatcheries, and he is making more mutalists now. These mutalists denying these zealots. I think he realizes how much of an advantage he has here that he can uh, 
He can just mess up the A units. Yeah, more cans didn't get added on, because I think in the first game, remember, York, you only made the five and kind of never made more mutants, so... I think if you, like, kind of sneakily adding in more, this Corsair is trying to look around, trying to find something, but... It doesn't see the mutants as they hash it, and they're already flying away. This Corsair has no idea. Or is it going to oh, get, yeah. get caught here? Oh no, it does have an idea. No, not for very long. <laughs> oh dear. Still wish he would use the sketch. But yes. Now he knows. He's going to make more cannons here. He could definitely dive on the main here. Corsair production had stopped. Goons even coming out very early. Before Templar. No Templar archives at all, in fact. Uh-oh. Yeah, I don't, I don't like what we're seeing here from then, like, trying to do goons and everything. You can see the mutas, they're going to be able to catch all these zealots and make sure they don't get anything. But this does buy more time for anti-air here. I wonder if you would actually still go for the attack and let the zealots do their thing, but York wants to be making sure that nothing too crazy is happening here. I think the correct move is to stop the zealots, because look at it this way, you are at least still getting, like, free units. Um, whereas if you can, it's like, maybe, maybe, you know, he does too much damage, and like, even if you take out his main nexus, he'll burn the dead, who knows. So I, I think it makes sense to bring it back, but at the same time, I think it makes sense for Protoss to send these guys out to force the units back in final time. But the Templar Archives haven't really just started, it's going to be a hell of a time, and he's still not making more Corsairs. Corsairs are the anti muter unit, that's why you, they're in the game, basically, so he needs to utilize that. I mean, at this point, it's going to be hard to go through. What I'm really worried about is he's working towards um, Templar. He's really showing us, like, I'm going to rely on Gradius, but he's only got four gateways. That's not enough production. That's yes. the plan. You can see how much money he's banking up because of it. And here we go. He's going to come in here. Brave enough to take on the cannon now, I expect. More being built. Yeah, they they, kill, that, they kill that, like, two swipes. That's yeah. no way. That is going to be critical damage. Yeah, going to take out that other cannon as well. Probes falling, these goons trying to get back in, but like, they have the worst possible path to get back in here. The goons will never reach this base. <laughs> oh my gosh, one lone goon comes in here, that's just fought off the Mutalus, a couple more out, but like, that is not going to do anything. Mutalus going to snow us in the room. At the same time, Hydra's attacking at the front, keeping the pressure on. And yeah, that goon is just going to fall. I think York is actually just going to crush through here. I don't think... Oh, there is this Corsair, actually. You can keep the Corsair alive. Two Corsairs now. Okay, you know what? With two Corsairs and all these goons, I suppose you can keep this Nexus alive. Oh, but he can't be losing that Corsair for free. These goons need to get in there. Oh, the goons just AFK right now. Well, how, how much health yeah, do you Yeah, the, the micro not looking particularly great for the Pro player here. But the Muse are just trying to fight the goons straight up. They're not really focused firing, but they are going to win that fight. They are losing some significant health doing it. But that means look at the front. There's so little defense here. Yeah, like, the Hydra's just waiting to count. Yeah, oh, that it's really just kind of... Because all these meters are so low. I, th I think he still can clean up the meters. I don't think the meters going to end the game, but they have done their damage. And his hydra is still building up. Why does he have a little bit of There we go. Corsair on the hunt here for these very low meters. And they realize they're moving they're welcome. They're going to get out now. But they did a lot of damage. Zerg supply block. Did he lose an overwatch somehow? Uh, I guess so. I'm not sure where exactly, but you can see York's up on supply, working on lurker aspect. and. With all the action happening on Ned's base, there's no Robo, and it probably ain't happening for a significant amount of time. Oh, that Corsair picking a fight that probably can't win here, although the Mutalists don't know it. Oh, no, they do. And that's so uh, many Hydras don't... again coming across. York again with the impressive macro, bringing a lot of Hydras to this fight. And I mean, what has he got? He's got one Templar, he's storming and dying. Assume it is, he's just getting Kedar and Amulet. Only one Storm available, though. I mean, you can just see that this build lines up so well. That's why it's like one of those standards, like, this is what you should learn first. You get the three hatch Spire, Mutus to put pressure if you want, Scourge if you need them, and you just get a good economy, lots of Hydras. You can see he's moving forward here. Storm not done, just being researched now, so that Templar lot energy is threatening, but that's all he can do is look menacing, as there's basically no units here and only a couple cans. Yorkie not pulling the trigger, doesn't want to, like, overcommit and lose, but... Realistically, there's no way that's gonna hold on. Yeah, I mean, if the Hydra's all burrow in one spot, it's possible. <laughs> Storm's pretty good. I don't know. Storm's not done! <laughs> Wait, what? He got Kadar and Amulet before Storm? Oh dear, I think that was a mistake. I don't think it was intentional. Oh, I didn't realize. Oh, so that Templar's a paperweight. He can try and intimidate, but I think York realizes, like, hang on, why didn't he storm me yet? Oh, I'm just gonna get in here. Oh, that Templar has so much energy, it's gonna die as well. Of course they're doing its work, but I mean, that's just so many happens. That's the Zerg Swarm right there, and I don't think anything you could do to stop this. Well, at least the Mutas got destroyed. At least there's justice for the Mutas. GG. Alright, that's a 2-0, isn't it? Yep. York, York looking pretty strong, getting, this, getting the win for the Fear Factory.
Right, well done to the, uh, not to the, to York. <laughs> Good try, dude. Th that was, that was a really solid last series, actually. I'm very impressed by those two players. I think they're going to do well in tier three, for sure. That was, uh, yeah, both, that was it. Yeah, both players looking pretty solid. That was definitely an exciting night. It's good to finally be back for much of the week. Uh, and hopefully I can, you know, be anticipating more casts from this point onwards as well. But that's all the games we had for tonight. Sitsura, I know you're just waiting to shill something. Go on. Yeah, well, we got more CPL matches to show. Tomorrow, uh, we got the, the Wednesday. The usual. It's going to be me plus somebody. Maybe Nublime. He hasn't told me yet. Uh, but that's going to be Pacific Fire and Cheese Police Tier 0. High-level play. Some uh, some nice mainstay people CPL as well. You definitely want to watch that one. And then, uh, you know, we got the Thursday, the EU edition with Pancake Princess. That's going to be Tier 1 from Destructodes and Beach Buddies of StarCraft. Lots of games on that list, a lot of names that I recognize as well, including Age. Who doesn't want to see Age? Oh my gosh, that's so, so make sure you hang out for that. Core Warp Gates uh, is going to be doing something Thursday night to be determined what, but still, lots of CPL action heading your way. As always, be in the Discord. We'll tell you what you're looking for. You'll get all the notifications as long as you're hanging around. And hey, dude, it was nice casting with you again. I feel like it's been ages. All right, then. That's it for us today. See you guys next time.